What's going on, everybody? to go batshit crazy. I don't know, the streets look almost the same here. I don't even know what I just said. Yeah, that's just what they do. Everybody, nobody complain anymore about what's going on, okay? It is what it is. If you want hundreds of thousands of people more to die, then keep complaining, all right? The reality of it is, is uh, everybody, it sucks for everybody, okay? I'm sure there's some people that were so rich it doesn't matter, you know? Uh, you'll be getting checks pretty soon. Yeah, every, everything needs to be, like, CrimeCon just got canceled, like, last week. I mean, I thought that was way too long. It should have been canceled way before that. It was really obvious. You didn't need to wait for somebody to say something. All right? It's just, uh... It's a freaking nightmare, okay? It has nothing, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. The only thing we can do about it is maintain social distancing. Don't go, well, it's okay, I know these people. Forget it. Don't go to any parties or anything for like a month. Can you do that? Look at I, I don't go to parties at all, right? Because I work from home and I don't have, you know, there's no, the place that I work for is in a whole different state. My regular job, all right? So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I somehow manage, you know? I don't really care that much about it. So even if you're a social person, just learn to not be one for a little bit, okay? Learn a new skill. Learn how to not be... Somebody needs to be around other people every two seconds, okay? Uh, you might find that it's kind of nice to have your own time. All right. Okay, let me see if I can say your name. Hold on. Andrea. Let me, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Ruggiero Drum, is that right? God, I hope that they did it right. Do your same phonetic thing. I think it was close. So it's Andrea. Andrea Ruggiero Drum, right? Closer. I'm just reading all the comments. <laughs> well, type in how I did I say it right that time? Thank you. That's what I said, right? I got it right that time. Andrea Ruggiero. I think I said it right. I think I got it right. <laughs> okay. Uh, but don't don't uh, get mad if I don't say it right every time because it's like one of those things where my brain already already thought it was something else. Yeah, you got Andrea, Andrea, uh, um, and Andrea, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Billy Boy Blue. <laughs> you almost put too much in there because it sounds the same. Times are so crazy. My friends totally cancelled the gang ban. Uh, wine and cheese party I was invited to tomorrow. Imticked. I think what you meant to say was, 
Times are so crazy. My friends totally canceled the gang... I mean, uh, wine and cheese party I was invited to tomorrow. I'm ticked. Right? Okay, there you go. <laughs> you, you put a little too much in there, you know? Just leaving off the G didn't leave anything to sort of a... Uh, you know, at least some of the question what the hell you were saying. All right. But thank you. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, nothing to the imagination. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys watch the, the special on... Uh, IDTV about the Delphi case. It was kind of disappointing, mainly because it was... There was so many commercials, like five minutes of commercials, and maybe 12 minutes of actual discussion on it. It was unbelievable. It, it really seemed like they... I don't know. Just kind of did a rush job. Uh, one thing that was new in there there was a little bit of a new piece of information was that the the phone was found near right near the girls like in the proximity of the girls so you know and then the phone went straight to voicemail at 3:30 they said and so they have a pretty good timeline but other than that it's I guess it's really frustrating. Why doesn't somebody just... And not only that, you want, you know, the thing that was even more bothersome is that they didn't even have the right uh, place where the girls were dropped off. You know, they kept saying, yeah, they were dropped off at the trailhead there. And they would, they would show it on the screen. Here, let me, let me get over there. Yeah, so they kept showing everybody that they were dropped off way back here at the Freedom Bridge over here. And then they just walked like this. But it just didn't happen that way. You know? So you got to get stuff right when you're doing it. Okay, I know there's this new YouTuber that's going to start getting into it. Yeah, because they're just so, they're so clever and smart about everything. Okay, well, um, yeah, they're the conspiracy wackos that saw ponytails on in the surveillance footage of the, in the case that we don't talk about, okay? Yeah, so anyways, on the show they said they were dropped off over here and walked across. They had, um, Carter was on there. And they were standing on the bridge. That was kind of cool, the shot there. I like the way they filmed it. Uh, one thing I thought was kind of weird, I don't know if it was just somebody drew it and put it on a building. But this was in the corner of one of the windows they were filming. And look at it, it's got like all these different angles of the bridge guy. Now, I don't know if that was just some clown that... Uh, Thought it was really cool to do that or what, but I don't know how you could possibly come up with all these different angles, like it's 3D, but it was on the window in one of the shots that was in there, in the show. I don't know what it says down here. Was this, you know, it might just be something that somebody put out. What do you mean it's from a 3D model that was set up? What are you talking about? They just did a sketch. You mean some idiot, somebody out on the internet made a 3D model of it? Okay, I get it. As if they had any way to know how long the nose would be or anything like that. What do you mean you're lost, Curious Georgia? Jesus, you're always just... Wow. You get so confused so quick. Uh, let's see. Hold on.
All right, 305, you're on the air. Hey, Gray, it's Bill from Miami. How are you? Not bad, not bad. How's it going? Doing fine. Uh, you're talking uh, Delphi tonight, which I'm always interested in. And uh, the, uh, what, what is it called? In Pursuit? Is that the uh, Yeah. Is that the show? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, what a shame. Yeah, they, uh, they you know, I would have thought they would have done a better job of, uh, of this and uh, a little disappointing. I mean, I do think it gives more attention to the uh, case, so that's great. But, uh, no, they, did not, they didn't, really didn't have anything new, and uh, that was disappointing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was just they didn't really do anything that was new or really at all. I mean, they, at least they got that one little bit about the phone, I guess. But. About the what? About the phone. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what we figure anyway, though. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think the uh, the controversy now uh, between this and the more recent, uh, the other recent uh, uh, Down the Hill podcast is all about that U-turn uh, controversy. And uh, I think that's the, you know, because this seemed to contradict the U-turn, con- the, the U-turn theory. So, uh, I thought that was the that was the takeaway maybe from this. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean the YouTube? What do you mean the U-turn theory? What are you talking about? You know that uh, that the uh, bridge guy came in from the south side, uh, oh. passed passed the girls, took a U-turn, and then came back. Because, oh yeah, uh, well, that's never been. Oh, I see. That's never been one of my theories. I, I always sh- shoot that down in two seconds because I know it's not what happened. You know because law enforcement doesn't believe that and. They always bring that up. Uh, oh, well, how do you know he didn't, you know, well, because that's ridiculous. Okay. So, yeah, it's good to know that that, well, that didn't happen. Well, the bridge is a, the bridge is a long bridge. Yeah. So if the, if the bridge guy was uh, coming from the north side and the girls were more than halfway across, I mean, it would be, uh, you, know, you, you know, you'd go into a panic if you saw some guy running from uh, the other side. I mean, you no, have no, to, that, that's what you. No, but that's just your assumption. You see, I think they were kind of nervous about the guy, but they're not going to be in a big panic. They didn't know if what what he was. They just kind of were nervous and scared about him. Okay, so they probably went a little quicker, got to the other end of the bridge, saw this guy coming, and they just kind of hoped he would go on by, and the worst nightmare happened. See, a lot of people they assign how what they think it should be, and they just get really into that. Uh, the, the truth is, is what they were saying on the show was that. They know the timeline that he walked, you know, they, he walked across, you know, went across the bridge and then he came out, you know, he came behind him there. Well, they don't, they don't know that. I mean, that, uh, that okay. is a the theory. So what was, part. so what was the takeaway that you got from it? Oh, well, no, the whole point is that, uh, you know, one of the, uh, ISP, uh, representatives, he seemed to say that they were followed, mm-hmm. although it's not clear if he's talking about being followed from the north side or if he's just being talking about being followed, you know, from, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, some, some yards away. So it's not really clear. No, no, it has to, no, no, that's, 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 that is clear. That That is clear. That's the controversy. Well, that is clear. Mm -hmm. That is crystal clear. Uh, Like if you're being followed now, if they thought he was coming from the other side, it wouldn't be like that. It would be like he came out and he trapped him because that means he would have, been on the other side already, past them. Then he walked about you know eighty feet or hundred feet past whatever the hell it was, turned around, and then Libby just started filming all of a sudden. You know, right. uh, uh, you know, and then right. he, and, right. you know he and he wouldn't have been following them at all at that point. It would just be trapping them, right? Well, right, right. So the, he he would trap them at, at the end, and the, and the whole purpose he would go uh, onto the bridge in the first place would be first to to uh, to go far enough so that he could see to the end of the bridge and make sure nobody was was following him mm. or that nobody was coming from that direction yeah. and that also he could he could also um, you know check out the girls and see uh, you know what kind yeah. of uh, situation he was about to uh, encounter so uh, that would those, you know those would be the two main issues that uh, why he would do that but the whole idea of him you know coming from the other side I mean it takes at least what four or five minutes for somebody, even at the quickest pace, to come across. And uh, you, know, well, you I can don't do know it a little quicker seen. than that because I have a fr- uh, friend that went out there and did it less than that. But 
I'm just saying that less if, than four, less well, than it four was, minutes. It was a woman. It was a woman. Yeah, and she'd never been there before. Less than four minutes. Yeah, you just have to be. You just have to be confident. Confident. Yeah. So the thing is, is uh, when you when you're walking across, see, he wasn't that nervous. He just walked across at a quick pace because he already knew there was nobody coming at that point. He was in the woods back there, probably following. Saw that they were on the bridge. And then he kept looking behind him, looking behind him. Nobody's How did coming. He, yeah, you, and then, okay, you yeah. think he was looking behind? You think he was looking? He, he was constantly swiveling his head back, looking behind. Because I don't know how you would know anyone was behind you. How would you know that? What, what, what are you talking about? You don't make any sense. Well, if he's starting from the north side and he's walking across, again, if he keeps swiveling his head, yes, that's how you would check. But that would be, that would really, you know... I probably couldn't make it across there in four minutes if you were, uh, or even, you know, or, or uh, let's just say yeah. three minutes. All it is is if he ever saw somebody, he would have just called it off and walked on by like he was going to be doing something else. Okay? But he walked across. He knew that there was nobody directly, directly behind him. He probably paused uh, about halfway between where you're by the 501 sign and... The bridge because there's this little spot right there where you can see both directions all the way so he could see that they went out onto the bridge and he kept going a little bit further a little bit further he knew nobody's behind him and he gets to the bridge then he hustles across probably glanced back one more time at some point to see if anybody was behind him and then he made his move so and then he quickly said get down the hill makes a hell of a lot more sense than somebody just sitting there all day just sitting on the other side hoping somebody you know this way he could shoo them across you know like there was a certain point well, where the, same, he, the w- same amount of waiting no matter which side you're on let's let, let's be honest no matter which side you're on it's the same amount of time waiting right i mean no matter which no. side you're on right well i don't I mean at least on the other side you could see the traffic is what i, I guess what i'm really getting at see on the yeah, other well, side well, you know you, see, you see, could see the traffic and they could see you right they could see you i mean why would you why would you sit there like a walmart greeter sit there and uh have walmart them, uh, you know, see you. <laughs> a Walmart greeter. Yeah. Right. I don't Why know. Why would you do that? I mean, you would, you would, you would definitely want to, to be hiding. You definitely want to not let anybody see you, or, or you wouldn't want to greet anyone. You wouldn't want to do any of that. So, yeah. best place for you to be is would be on the south side of the bridge. Yeah, I, I don't agree with you. Okay. I mean, you always say you, every not. time you call, you do the same godforsaken <laughs> argument. Do you have anything else to talk about? It, I, it's just a ludicrous conversation every time. Uh, well, you know, we well, yeah. no. I mean, last time we talked about the uh, the whole last time we talked about the whole um, geocaching theory. Remember? And uh, we talked about the yeah, uh, that was the new the, the new and all that other stuff. the big new uh, right. theory out there, the geocaching. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, we're still waiting on the uh, on the next. You know the next thing to drop on that on that theory. We're watching that uh, you know that channel that uh, that I know, I know you don't like me mentioning other other channels, but the other channel that uh, uh, basically introduced that whole whole theory. And that yeah. uh, they are uh, we're still waiting on them. They say follow the money, and I don't know what the hell that means. I, you know that doesn't make any sense to me. So uh, we're going to see what that means. I guess they're going to have some some uh you know hopefully jaw-dropping evidence of uh you know some something that uh mm-hmm. you know that shows that yeah this, some jaw-dropping information that, that <laughs> it's not really legit but something that'll sound really cool to the people who want to believe so they'll go oh wow yeah 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 you know look at look at look at look at look at look at you know i i know exactly how it goes it's you know because i've actually asked <laughs> kelsey about the uh, whole geocaching she said it's totally right? bo- totally bogus Okay, so unless she's lying, then you know, All right? Well, I'm not saying she, you know, if she's lying. She might not know. You know, if she right. if she knew the answer to the case, she would tell us who who the killer was. So uh, I don't know who, you know, what the issue is, or uh, you know, it'd be inter- It's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that, and uh, I'm anxiously awaiting for it. You know, they say follow the money, and again, this does not seem like a monetary crime. So mm. I, it makes no sense to me, but. Uh, who knows? You know that. So that's what we're watching out for. Yeah, hey, I'll let you uh, let you go, Greg, because I know you get other callers that uh, <laughs> want to call in and talk about this case. Uh, so thank you very much. Well, that's okay. You know, I, I mean, I know that you, you you always call in about you know you have you're just really convinced that he 
was on that other side the whole time. But nobody else is. Nobody in law enforcement is. So you got to sort of think to yourself, oh, I'm not gosh, sure. could oh, I I'm be wrong? Sure about that. Yeah. No, 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 that's actually, actually the Down the Hill podcast, those, the, the three HLM producers, they believe that he was on the South Side. I think a lot of people think he was on the South Side. That makes, to me, a, you know, a lot more sense and it goes to a lot of people. So hmm. it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate belief. The thing is this. What does that give you? I mean, oh, I didn't even watch. That, I didn't, it doesn't. You know, yeah, does I guess it, it doesn't does really it, matter does it at all. Get closer? It just doesn't make a lot of does sense that it, that he would walk by him, say, "Hey, ga- ga- gals or gir- hey guys," when she walks by the first time. Then he walks Wait, about a hundred feet, why you get, and then why, he turns yeah, around. Where are you getting that so you, from? Yeah, no, but, where are you getting that? So you from? think he walked? You, you think he walked by them, went a hundred feet, then on the way back he says, "Hey guys," then down the hill, I, right? That's I don't weird. Know, I don't know. I don't know when he. I don't know when he. First of all, I didn't. I never heard him say "Hey" anyway. So I heard him say "guys" down the guys. Well, I hear him say. I hear him say uh, "the guys" like that. It's like a quick little "the guys." You can hear that little pause, but you're, you're probably okay, not. You can you're hear. You're probably. You you're probably not you that and, good at. You and Harvey it. Carroll can hear it. You and no. Harvey Carroll can hear that. No, I. I, I no, that just means I you're know. not very skilled at what you do. I know exactly what, right. what I I'm so, doing. Right. I yeah, know. you're ridiculous. You got the audio techniques, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. Right. But, just like uh, get, no, I don't like know down he, the hill he, doesn't say like down the hill just doesn't say down the hill it says it has there's a little sound like get down the hill like that see there's a like nobody yeah. just goes down the hill that's really ridiculous it's like get down the hill get down the hill but you but you, when you play it you can hear he the little down, pop. He, says down, he says down he says down the hill down well, the no hill. he doesn't he, he doesn't he says hill. get down the hill like that oh he says go he says go in there no, it's like G go apostrophe down. down the hill, like that. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, there's no go. Right. Like I see, I didn't even say go right there, but you made it sound like yes. He said go down well, the well, hill, the G, really it, slow, like well, that. Well, the, the G apostrophe is. You the, barely can hear it because it goes, it goes, it goes. Get down the hill. Okay. All like right. that. All right. Okay. See, that's the thing okay. is, it doesn't just say down the hill. You know. Yeah. You can hear yeah, it if you but play. But I mean, it. the whole, the whole point I'm making is that. Whether you think he came from the north side or the south side, how does that, you know, bring us closer to who the person well, is? Well, nothing. So I'm wondering why you does. bring it up every single time you call in. I, I, I'm done. You know, I, I know what, you know, the theory that makes the most sense to me. And every single time you right. call in, you keep saying the same thing as if it does matter. You're the one that brings it up, right? Yeah. Well, right. you know, so, I, I think it might, it might have something to do with. How the person entered or exited the uh, the crime scene. Mm. So uh, you know it might be uh, relevant in that respect. Uh, if it's right. the, uh, if this is if it's this professor who is working about a mile away, uh, then uh, maybe he uh, you know and, and and came from that you know that south side. So and that's where he was working on the south side of the river, and uh, that might make some some, some sense. So I guess yeah. that that's that's why it might be relevant, I suppose. Yeah, well, the thing is, is they, they think he parked way over here by the CPS building. And that means he mm-hmm. probably would have gone to the trail. So you think he walked all the way across the bridge. Yeah. No, I, they, I never heard them say that the bridge guy was the one who was parked at the CPS building. Well, I, but, but I know they never they never said, said that, that, but don't you think they when they say this, when they say this sentence, we want to know who the, if anybody knows who the driver well, of the vehicle was that parked right, at the right. old CPS building. That means... They think well, that whoever well, driv- drove the car, that they know what kind of car it is. They just want somebody to let let us know who the driver was. That's it. Right. They, they know what well, kind of car it was. Well, they didn't bring it up until, they didn't bring it up until over two years after. Jack and Jill went down the hill both with a yeah. buck and a quarter. Yeah, I thought that you was know. dumb. Jill came back with 250 <laughs> Thanks, Billy Boy Blue. Yeah, the... Um, you, know, uh, you know, by the way, I will say this. One of the, the best things I think that you, you have offered to this case, one of the best things you've offered in the case is the fact that I am absolutely convinced that the reason why they think that there was a car relevant to this crime is because there was a camera on that warehouse, and you're the one who who uh, revealed that, at least to the, uh, I mean, they, you know, the yeah. law enforcement knows these things. Well, I had Cairo go out and check those, public. I had Cairo go out and right. check those buildings right. because I, I, had a, I, right. I, I had a feeling there was a camera on one of those buildings, and I think that the car... Right. They probably could see it parked there, and then it maybe didn't pick up the motion of somebody getting back in it, and then it drove off, and they just want to know who the driver was because I think they are aware that he walked back. Uh, the witnesses that are out there maybe saw him walk back, maybe even went back to the Freedom Bridge 
area and then walked on that little path that's right next to it there. What did the, what did that what did you know I know I know you, you must have, have talked to Cairo a lot about this, but what did the business owner of that of that warehouse what did what did he say? Did he say that he gave it to them early on? Did he say he saw this early on? I mean What are you talking uh, about? What are you, ta- I mean, who? What are you talking about? The business owner who had the camera. Well he didn't talk the to the business the owner, building. he just went around and filmed where the cameras were. Yeah, but the can but didn't you say that the that the at one point you said that the uh that he had had it on for many years, the uh, this camera on the building that it was in place during the course of this. Uh, yeah, time well, and so I'm forth. just I'm just saying a business doesn't change their camera uh, because there's a murder somewhere. They would change it if they got they would add a camera. I meant if they got robbed or something. Okay, uh, right. But so right. I, I feel like I mean I don't know for sure, but I think that the camera has been on that building and that's what they looked at. There's also another camera on another building down that 300 that shows the road and again Mm -hmm. they could have seen him walking i mean what if they have him walking on that but it's really far away and blurry and then they actually then they see the car drive away in in a reasonable time that's similar that would fit him just walking there and then you'd think well shit right think that he walked you know through the maybe up through the cemetery out on the 300 and then down, he could have cut across, got back on the trail maybe, or he just right. went, you know, that's it. No, I agree. With you. I agree with you. I wish I knew what they knew, you know, so that, uh, you know, things maybe would would make it a little more clear to me. Uh, that's very possible. But, no, I think that uh, you're absolutely correct that that's how they they detected this, this vehicle that was parked. It wasn't that some witness saw it. It wasn't that, uh, you know, uh, you know, some you know, police officer drove by and saw it. I think it is exactly the way you described that it's the uh, warehouse camera that spotted it. So that is definitely a good one. And uh, you also say that the satellite did not the satellite uh, photo that you had mm. didn't reveal anything. Uh, that sounds crazy to me. I think that I would think that the satellite photo would have better, you know, you know, more detail. No, nah, that's just what really this is what they have. Some satellite. There's another guy that's trying to find it, but he's not going to find another a clear one. Like Trevor, in the chat there, he's really. Oh, I'm going to get this really clear. It, he's not going to go because there's one. The yeah. one that we found was on the 13th, and looking at the shadow, I figured out it was around you know 1250. You know, I was really close, just guessing. And then on the metadata, it said like 1250 something, and it's just high up in the air. Right. You're not going to. It's they have different levels of satellite imagery you've got the high resolution and you have medium resolution which is really shitty and then low resolution which is like awful right so they have different resolution so you might have something that's three meters and that's not even really that good because three meters means that you can make out detail you can see something that's three meters you know like google yeah. earth now when you zoom in you can see a foot you know so um yeah. You know, you need something that's really there's. They have high resolution. Maybe they're starting to pick up on more of that, and in the future, it'll be more useful. But there isn't anything like that on this one. Yeah. So. Well, like I said, the you know the only thing that I'm really uh, looking forward to right now is to see maybe more information on that. Uh, you know, on that whole. Uh, Although I hope he can find. Well, hold on. Theory, I will say know? that I hope he does come if he can find one that's higher resolution. It'd be cool, but I've checked a shitload yeah. of satellite companies, and they yeah. most of them don't even have that date. There was one Israeli company that had it, and then there was another one that I found that had it too, but recently, but it was even worse than the one I got before. So they just don't have the well, high enough so resolution. Exciting. Was, yeah, that was very exciting. When you came up with that, that thing, was, uh, you know, I was so excited. It was really you know, cool, when you had yeah. Satellite. Yeah, it really was. No, that was fantastic. So, and that's something that you should keep in mind for other other cases as well, because I do think that uh, you know it's amazing that uh, a satellite was passing over that area at about that time. That's really shocking, and uh, and that there was a picture. So, thank you very much, Cray. I appreciate it. Yep. You are the only live true crime <laughs> talk show that I'm aware of in the world. So I am well, uh, there's very thankful some other that you're ones, on, <laughs> and uh, you have a live talk show, and. Uh, you know, and uh, I know there's other ways that, that people do this. Uh, maybe they get, you know, some more, you know, viewers or whatever, but they don't have a live talk show. And people who are really into true crime, 
Uh, this is uh, this is exactly what they're. These, the, the people who watch you are really the hardcore uh, true crime lovers. So yeah. they are definitely people that I don't want get to solve these cases. I don't get the sensationalistic. Yeah. Uh, you know, cover the same case every single day to yeah, build, to build up the sub count like so many others do. You know, it's just and, right. And, no, you've it, done a great job. Great job. I love that. Uh, you know, your coverage of that case out out uh, in Oregon. The uh, the case where the uh, no, you know the young Allison woman Watterson. has been missing in that. Yeah, yeah. Any news on any news on that at all? Uh, no, no, not, not really. Yeah, nothing yeah. new. No, but you, 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 you know, you've provided the best coverage on that case. You've done a lot of great cases, so well, I you. really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, you know, <laughs> I will continue watching. Thank you. you. Call it again. Bye-bye. Don't don't bring up the bridge thing next time. All right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's good. I, I don't know what it is. It's just really frustrating sometimes. The whole, the way people, I guess it's smart to build up your channel that way, but I, I, in some ways it's not, because as soon as you start covering something that they're not interested in, nobody watches. But I seem to have a pretty good, at least a decent, you know, I usually get, lately it's been kind of lower during a coronavirus deal, but uh, a little less viewers for some reason. But it is what it is. But hey, if you want to change a pace and instead of fretting every second about the, you know, the, the virus, come on in here. Although the, you know, topic of true crime isn't really uplifting, but I do have a sense of humor sometimes. Yeah, so you guys can call in if you want to. Yeah, what you should do is call in and tell me what your theory is, but don't ask me what I think of it, okay? Thank you, Claudia Neubauer. Pretend I'm a cup of coffee, everybody. (laughs) Thank you. There's no Starbucks isn't open, so, you know. Maybe one day. Yeah, it's tough to... uh, you know, I wouldn't spend a lot of money, Trevor, if you find it, because, you know, I spent that pretty good amount of money for something that really wasn't that clear. I would spend $2,000 if I could get it, if it was one centimeter, and it was like a 130 on the 13th, I would spend that money in a second. And I bet you if I did a fundraiser for it, we would raise that money in two shows if there was something that was available that was one centimeter clarity on February 13th at, uh, you know, one thirty. It'd be crazy. Yeah, you know, I try to help. I mean, I, it is kind of, you know, you want to be, feel like people appreciate your time that you spend on your channel. That's one thing. But at the same time, you know, we donate Some a lot of money too. Some people look at so. their channel as a business. You actually try to help. Well, thank you. I did get a hold of um, Tess, by the way. Contessa, the sister in the case that we were discussing the other night. Uh, She might, we might be able to do an interview with her. I got a, they're actually putting together a uh, memorial. Because I didn't realize it, but remember she went missing on April 1st, right? And well, hell, today's the second, so they're actually doing a like a candlelight vigil somewhere. I'm not, I'm not sure how they're going to pull that off during the coronavirus, but yeah, that's exactly right, uh, Trevor. Because I think law enforcement had the same one that we were able to obtain. Because I I asked uh, somebody, and they go, "Oh yeah, we have that one." Gray, you have covered the case for three years. 
Some just saw the episode on Jay Walsh and knew here. Love your coverage. Oh, yeah? Well, put a one if you've never heard of the case until wa the John Walsh case. And you're just here for the first time like, whoa, I, I want to know more about it because I, I can go over it. I can't really, that seems really like almost impossible <laughs> at this point. But maybe there are. Okay, there's one. You don't have to put a zero. Just put a one if you hadn't. Welcome for what? What do you mean? What happened? Yeah, well, you know what's crazy? Today I was looking up a case in Florida. Uh, there was somebody sent me three or four cold cases, but I started looking up on my own some other ones. And uh, and I found it, and then in the articles there was these similar ones, and then it ends up turning out, guess what? That the one that I was looking at, a serial killer confessed to it along with 20 others, and he's one that nobody ever really hears about. I mean, it's like, what, who is this guy? Never even heard of him. So I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go through each one of his victims that he claims, and maybe do like a four-part series just on his victims. I think that'd be interesting. And I'll put that all on a playlist or something. But but some of them are still noted as unsolved. So maybe we could figure out if they were. If he really, because he could have just been like that other guy. Who's the other guy that claims just about every one of them? <clears throat> okay, so for, for I'll just do a quick um, recap uh, using this map here. Oh, wait, there's a, somebody on hold. Hold on a second. 707, you're on the air. Hey, it's Susanna. Oh, hey, what's going on? Um... Not a lot's going on, but I, if you could put your map back up, that would be lovely. Yeah, it's up there. I just want, I was going to go do, go over the whole thing again, but what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, I can't see the, I can't see the uh, Delphi map. Yeah, but what do you need to have it up there for? What do you? Well, I, I, I thought we were supposed to call in with our theory. Oh, your theory. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's your, <laughs> was I, okay. I was going to start over and. I've, I go. was I was trying to stick with the program this <laughs> excuse me program this time and not go off on a tangent. Okay. All right. See, my not knowing um, p perhaps one thing that you know that I don't know. I think the bloke came and went through the cemetery. Oh my goodness, cemetery. Mm -hmm. So you think he went and uh, he walked through the water t for at first? Mm hmm. So he would have to go through the water then. Go up onto the bridge. So you think he was on the south side too, then, right? I now I think the the cemetery is it not uh, between the road and the park? No. Okay. The cemetery is right here. So if you went through the cemetery, you have to go over the water. Unless you think you went through the cemetery and then walked way over here, like you know wherever I do. wherever you went. Yeah. I do. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that's your I theory. All right. Yeah, my theory is he would spend more time entering the scene. This is usual. You'll take your time setting your entrance up, but you won't take, you'll do everything you can to be able to get out more quickly. Mm. If you follow me, um, it's because going, parking in that cemetery and people don't really pay attention to who's parked in the cemetery, you know, they're concentrating on you know, doing their own thing in there. And uh, so I think it, if you want to look like you're doing, if you want your car to look normal, it, park it in that cemetery. And people will just think you're visiting your loved ones out there somewhere. Yeah, except he didn't, they didn't park there because that's not where they're looking for that vehicle. Yeah, I don't understand why after all these many years they suddenly... Are obsessed, well, obsessed is the wrong word, isn't it? That they are now suddenly keyed in on a vehicle. 
I mean, what have they always known about this vehicle and just not mentioned it for two years? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I wish they had mentioned earlier. Yeah. It could have just been that a few different people said, hey, we saw a Ford Expedition parked there. And then they say, okay, we know that we know what kind of car that was because three people saw it. So now we just want to know who the driver of that was. See, me, I might not even remember the car being there after this yeah. many years. And and also your you know the witnesses didn't see you know in in your theory, the way you have it there'd be hardly any witnesses that would have ever seen him but there's a couple of them, and so I I just don't I don't think so I think there's people that okay. saw him actually on the trail walking. Well, I believe he's walking. He was walking around. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that was just my idea. Was the cemetery is the would be the quickest way for him to get uh -huh. out of that place. Yeah, I think it's definitely so a possibility he left through the cemetery, but yeah. I don't think he got it, in there. Yeah. yeah, by using that cemetery, he's not so much tied physically around the time he did the murder. No, oh, Jesus. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. Hey, thanks, Trevor. <laughs> wow, that like hurt my ears. Yeah, the dark. <laughs> God, you freaked me out. Oh. Hey, thanks, Trevor. That must have been on uh, Stream Labs there. Oh. <laughs> wow, good. I was just totally <laughs> sitting there and then bang. Just... It's like, like I said, my dark. <laughs> it's like, what the hey was that noise? Uh, so anyway, I just think that this is not a stupid person. This, per this person's a hunter. And he's... um. He, he's hunted other little girls, I would think, because he's too good at it not to have had practice. Yeah, I just think he's and a hunter. A, he's a hunter of people. I don't know if he's. A yes. Hunter. Well, girls, people. Yeah. He's a hunter. Let's. Go. Whoa! Is that me in in Brazil? All right. Um, I think he's a hunter of people. He stalks people. Now, if you go hunting, you how do I put this? You can you can stand around ahead of time when something happens and you're just milling in a crowd but it, but after somebody has something like this happen and you, you do something this significant you just need after you've done your ritual you probably want to get away unless he's the kind of killer that likes to hang around mm. you know yeah, and yeah. see that and see all the excitement, but that would imply he lives there. Yeah, I don't right? see. I don't really know. I mean, for me, it feels like he maybe he just sort of knows the area because he's lived generally in the area. Uh, yeah. And then he went there. He just kind of knows the cemetery. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just it, you know the, the fact that there's mm -hmm. only there's that little shallow area there across the creek. You know, he it's definitely possible that he made him go down the hill and he was going to do something to him down in this little corner area that I, I've identified a few different times. Yeah. But then they may have just tried to get away and mm -hmm. they noticed the shallow spot there. So there's a lot of stuff that we, you know, people are assuming, oh, he had to have known the area really well to know to cross the creek right there. But does he really, does he, th does that really mean that? Because what it, all he could have been was, he crossed the bridge, trapped him, and said, hey, get down the hill. And he knew that it was kind of wild back there, and he's going to bring him back to this yeah. corner. And then they go, they made a run for it, and then he went yeah. across the stream creek chasing them. chasing them. So it had nothing yeah. to do with him. And then then he went, instead of going back across the creek and across the bridge, exposing himself to anybody that was coming, he walks up through the cemetery, maybe down the road, and then maybe cuts back in at a different point. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, like you were saying, I think the girls scarpered. I'm sorry, they ran. They had a point in time where they saw that, hey, if we run, we might get away. And they gave it a try. So it was their knowledge of what was the terrain more than his to get them across that creek. If you follow me. Yeah, I was just reading. So, somebody said maybe... <laughs> Maybe the killer will be tested for coronavirus and his DNA will be recorded. 
No, because well, they're not I mean, recording our DNA. They're re- they're testing for the coronavirus. Yeah, so, they're, no. They're not, yeah. they're not doing DNA testing. They're looking for the RNA um, yeah. of the coronavirus. That's how you get... Right. When they here's here's what... See, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of conspiracy wackos right now that probably believe that every one of these swabs, they're really collecting a mass database of DNA from <laughs> everybody. You know? Yeah, really. Because it makes a cool story. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That's one of the funnier things I've heard this week. Yeah. Is that you're going to be doing DNA on everyone that... Yes, Delphi is going to now in institute... You know what? We are generous. We are going to swab everybody in Delphi to check for the coronavirus. But what mm-hmm. we're going to do is send it in for a DNA analysis to see if it matches anybody. Of course, yeah. they'll also use it. That there's that one guy who's going to say, um, nope. I know that they were joking. It was pretty obvious. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyways, um, th- but they were uh, there would be that one guy who doesn't want to get tested for the COVID nineteen, right? Or you know the coronavirus. Yeah. So that's the killer, right? Because he th- well, he was paranoid that. Yeah. You know. Well, they had in in the UK. It's got to be twenty years ago, maybe more. They had. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of serial killers in the UK that people know about. They're there, but it's sort of like, it just doesn't get the publicity that they have, you know, in the States and other places. But they had a, three women who had been raped and murdered in this one distinct geographical area. And the police were really gobsmacked. They didn't know what, what to do. And they knew this guy would just keep on killing. And they w- reached out to the, p- the scientific public to see, is there anything you can do for us? And the original um, scientist who developed um, one part of DNA replication, he responded. And so what they did is the constabulary in that county, they identified 3,000 males they wanted to test their DNA and they tracked each and every one down and each and every one didn't match yeah what and a it waste was of only time. Be- it was only because a woman in a bar heard another guy saying he had taken a test from one of his mates mm-hmm. one of his friends that they were able to indeed locate the guy that sort of uh, paid someone off to take the test for him and he was the one I love the, the freak murder. family blue heart <laughs> thanks Sean Beecham <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah, so they d- you know I think that there is a, is a will to do certain things like you know swab the entire town of Delphi for what good it would do which is probably none uh, it has been done historically in other places there's a precedent for doing it but there's an on the other side of that park is another somewhat larger town. It could just as easily be someone from there, you know. So I, I don't know that testing Delphi for DNA would have a lot of effect, but the corona testing is, there's about five ways to do it now, and yeah. they're getting it down ever, sl- ever. Well, I think it's what's, gonna, what's great about this whole thing, if there's anything positive, is that we'll have something uh, completely ready to go the next time. I, as a matter of fact, what I w- once they do this, you know, like they they could see what was going on in China, except China hit everything and made it seem like, oh look, it we we recovered. We mm-hmm. nobody's getting it anymore. It's full of shit. I bet you, I bet you, uh, I bet you, fifty to a hundred thousand people have died in China right now. I, I wouldn't be I would see, yeah. surprised at all. Uh, so the thing is, is they completely were bogus. But let's say the virus started in South Korea or something. You know, then we'd have mm-hmm. a really good idea of what's going on. And the second it hit anybody in the United States, you you have to immediately shut everything down. You, I mean, you have to go mm-hmm. straight to social distancing and maybe even a lockdown thing until you wait for that guy to clear out. And if any new cases, man, you just shut it down. You got to get it done quick. And then you set, you got to have a mass testing thing where you send people t- kits to their home. And uh-huh. uh, every then you know exact, and they call in. You know you have to rely on. There's going to be some idiots. Oh, I don't have it. You know, even though they had, yeah. 
But you still got to do it that way. And then most people or normal people would say, yes, I have it. Then they give you instructions. Who have they talked to? You know, the contract uh, tracing, do all that shit, and boom, you're done. Instead, yeah. it just was let kind of, you know, like New York was so unprepared, it's kind of uh, kind of scary. Well, you know? New, York is, New York is a farce. I'm sorry. Um, and part of it is just the culture. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got allergies. The culture there in New, in New York, you know, they just, they seem to think it's a... Uh, a good thing to go your own way and uh, watch a hospital ship come into the harbor. <laughs> it's crazy. supposed to be taking care of sufferers and they are massing about what twenty thousand people watching that thing. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm sorry. What planet were these people? Have these people been living on? Yeah, like they were just playing basketball the other day. Still, like oh, big games, you know, five on five. Yeah, that's that's really that's genius. Yeah, that's what you do when you're, you know, that's like the... When you're, <laughs> when you're, when you're crazy. Now, in the Philippines, it's a fact that the president there ordered shoot on sight for people breaking the quarantine. Now, I think that's a little bit uh, extreme. Yeah. But not doing anything is extreme in the other direction, you know? Let yeah. Them, There's some people let them making people this argument, you know, like, uh, what's her name? There's a lady on Fox News, actually, that... Uh, starting to Laura Ingram kind of pissing me off all of a sudden she keeps making this argument <laughs> yeah she's making this argument like you know look at all the devastation we're doing and the the death rate's only you know 0.25 you know I mean the death rate's probably really something like 0.2 or 1 if you got all the red but you know how big point that is that is huge and the infection rate is three times the flu and then it um yeah. It's way more deadly than the flu. So you're looking at something oh, yeah? like if you if you took 200 million people and you do, you know, 10 percent would be or 300 million people. So that would be 30 million would be 10 percent. Three million would be one um, percent. So let's say it's point two. You know, that is a just a ridiculous number. It's like 900,000 deaths. Okay, uh, I'm not. I'm you know I'm not into that. You know, it just no. It, it's unacceptably. That's if everybody got it. But if you didn't do yeah. anything, everybody would get it. I mean, the thing is, is yeah. if you didn't do mitigation, every single person would get it. Exactly, it's that contagious. Yeah, it's more contagious to certain blood types, but that just means you'll get it more quickly or you'll get it uh, more severely. But everyone is susceptible to it. No one has any immunity based on uh you know prior contact with the thing it's brand new it's what yeah. they call it novel it's yeah. a t it's a game changer as far as yeah. everything is concerned and now they're associating it with certain uh, changes that are happening in the brain as well they are seeing that um yeah. now in many cases and that's very frightening as a, because in, in these cases even if you know, you have a person on a respirator and you get them off alive, which is on its own a miracle. Because if, if you put you on a respirator, basically, sadly... I haven't heard anything about the brain thing yet. But. Yeah, it, you know, I I saw it. Uh, it's out and about, but it was in a... I'll try to find the link and I'll see if I can get you access yeah, to it. Yeah, but hold on. I got... Look at it. I, I, I better hang I'm, up anyway. Yeah, I'm going to get back to Delphi. I got Bye. another caller. But, yeah, yeah but I, like send me the I link. Send me the link. <laughs> no, it's okay. I go off. It's such a big deal <laughs> that it's worth, you know, you got to bring it up. Yeah, it's, I, it's <laughs> obsessive right now. And we have nothing better to do here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sort of out. Thank you <laughs> again. Okay, have a good one. See you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, whatever, caller user one, whatever the hell that is. Hi, I'm Christine from East Coast. From where? New Jersey. Oh, what's going on? How did you get the thing? That uh, said, did you type that in that, to put the word caller in user one? How did that show up like that? It usually has a phone number there. but I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I All just right. did the instructions. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> what's going on? Well, what was with regard to the Delphi, yeah. um, I think the, the, you know the portrayal you've done is is really excellent. The one thing that constantly I wonder about is 
you know, I think it was a weekday afternoon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, well, it was like, uh, so the, was it Monday? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The randomness of it, you know, that he would have been there. Did he routinely go there and just look for people to stalk? Or, you know, there was no way for him to know that those two girls were likely to come along. Maybe on a weekend there'd be a high likelihood or something. But was he just sitting there in the truck with a pair of binoculars, or was he in the woods? Well, there's no, there's no, you can't sit somewhere in a truck with binoculars and see anybody. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, I think, I well, I think he's somebody that may have gone there, uh, maybe a few days in a row, just waiting for somebody to fall into the trap that he had set. Me, you know, he knew that. Um, you know, like my theory is, is he was on the other the side of the bridge where the girls were dropped off on, and he was looking for, you know, was waiting for the timing. He knew, you know, he's sitting there the whole day. He knew who was there. He knew who had gone onto the bridge, and and they had come back. So he knew nobody was still out there. And then he finally the the two girls went there, and he just knew that there was nobody in front of him, and he knew that there was actually nobody else around at that time. So he kind of followed them down the path a little bit kept watching nobody was coming nobody was coming and then he just made his move onto the bridge and at any time had he looked back and there was somebody on the other end of the bridge i think he just would have passed the girls and pretended that uh you know he was just going on the other side to look for something well that's that's pretty nefarious for a one offer you know it seems like if that's the case and this guy has done this before yeah. and also if there is a camera then he would have been spotted on that camera in the prior days or whatever. Um, well, I always thought he, there, yeah, there isn't. There isn't really. There's no cameras out there. There was one, like a trail camera that um, somebody had, but I don't think it filmed that area. But in that parking, in but that I, place where he parked. But I've always said he's like a um, a. Uh, oh, what happened? Oh. Are you, well, you can call back in. I don't know what happened. You you just sort of went off the air, but. I um, I always thought that uh, the guy was a killer. You know, he was a hunter. He was a serial killer type. We just don't know. Was that his first one, or you know, that's it? I mean, we don't know anything about him. I, I mean, I've always thought that because I've said since day one that I think that there was something at the crime scene that was so unusual that the FBI got involved, and that's why I always think he was a serial killer type. I'm not sure what happened. Who, uh, whoever called in, you're, you just sort of got disconnected randomly. I didn't touch anything. Yeah. So whoever, uh, there was somebody in there that hadn't, didn't know, but, uh, you know, the girls were over here at, this is where they live. Abby was staying overnight with uh, Libby, and Becky was having them do work work stuff and then you know at one point you know they got up in the morning had breakfast uh Derek made them pancakes and you know, around noon they were like hmm maybe we should go to the bridge and they asked for permission they were given permission to go to the bridge as long as they had a ride there and a ride back so Kelsey gave them uh, agreed to give them a ride there they said that they had a ride back but hadn't really planned that yet but they knew that Libby knew that she could call Derek and he would say, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, that's what happened. He was supposed to pick him, pick them up about an hour and a half to two hours after they left. And so they leave here at about probably, you know, 125, something like that. 125, and then they end up over here by the, uh, let's see. So this is the route they took in green, and then the purple and green merge, and then they drop, get dropped off right here. Uh, at the parking area right at this there's a little place where you can park and then you walk here and then you can either go that way or towards the Monon High Bridge or there's this other trail here that you can go down here and that's actually the trail that Derek went down after he got there at um, 313 I think is when he got there 315 let's just say 315 he talked to a guy in a flannel shirt out here, and that person said, no, he didn't see two girls down at the bridge, just a couple of people down under the bridge. 
So then he went down this direction. And so that was another part that they got wrong on the special. They said that Derek went to the, the Monon High Bridge over here, and that's not, that's not how it went. Okay. So they just didn't really take the time to get the information correct. All right, hold on. All right, so you, uh, you called back in. Yeah, I got. I don't know why I've got the disconnect. It was probably my fault. But anyway, yeah. the other thing is, it seems to me, I kind of had three points. The second point was, it seems to me like the girls must have picked up on something weird about him pretty quickly. Because by the time, you know, the video clip portion of the encounter, I think they, you, you, you know, you get the sense they already knew, obviously, so this was not just a guy that happened to be out there like they were. And I, I do wonder if they had seen him previously, either he while they were taking pictures, they mm. saw him or when they were walking up and they saw him kind of watching them. But then he turned away or appeared to go in another direction or something. But by the time there's that video thing, those two poor little girls are already panicked. You just get the sense of it. Um you know, so mm -hmm. I, it seems to me if he had just come up on them suddenly at that point, their first inclination would have been like, oh, this is like a fisherman guy or a hunter guy or something that yeah. came up. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I've always said that it was, they probably, you know, it was like, here comes that creepy guy, you know. And that, that's, yeah. one, that's one of the things why I really think they came from that direction, too. It's just all of that stuff. It's like... Um, you know, they were, uh, what did, what did, uh, Abby said something like, um, uh, he's right behind me, isn't he? Right. It's like, it doesn't seem like, feel like she would say yeah. that if he passed him, you know, already then turned around and came back. There's just a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense to me. That but they clearly, yeah, it, it, it does seem like somewhere they, they saw him prior to that and and uh you know so they knew right away when they saw him again something was not right the yeah. third point is it seems i can't quite reconcile is um you know these are two healthy energetic lively teenagers and if they did take off running because they would have been in a freak panic on top of that how did he how did he manage to get the two of them you well know, i mean if you, had, if you, had a, his, you know if he had a gun you know you just maybe catch one and say hey i'm gonna shoot you know i don't know who knows but the, yeah, well, we do we do know that one of libby's shoes was found on the opposite side of the creek that they were found on you know so the when you say down the yeah, hill her yeah. shoe was found on this side so it makes you wonder i mean something was going on where a shoe would come off were you running or under some sort of oh i'm sure you know, i don't it's, yeah. hard to, it's hard to know yeah you know, it's hard to know what happened i agree with you yeah yeah i agree with you heartbreakingly i think he may have grabbed if they did get away from him and ran and ran across the water and all that if he was able to grab one he might have said to the yelled out to the other one and said you know if you don't come back i'm gonna hurt your friend or something which is heartbreaking right. to think about as well um the other thing is if he did go across the water when obviously he did and up the hill and through the cemetery or whatever while he was walking down that road wouldn't he bet have been kind of conspicuously in daylight soaking wet what was that again sorry about that if he matches. you know yeah he ran across the water uh you know the crime occurred he goes up the hill to the cemetery it's still daylight. Wouldn't he have been kind of conspicuously soaking wet walking down the road? Uh, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't, you know, I mean, I don't know when you say conspicuously. People aren't walking. Oh, look, he's got wet legs. You know, it, it, look at, um, at the time, if he was, even if he was just walking on the road, somebody wouldn't even have paid attention to the guy because nothing had happened yet. Now, the next day, yeah. everybody walking on the road oh who's that who's that who's that you know but on that day nobody yeah. would, nobody would nobody would even care like uh, driving by or driving you wouldn't look down at his feet first 
And even then, he had jeans yeah. on, and maybe it's hard to tell if they're wet or not. You know, I mean, you yeah. know, this, this is one yeah. of the things. Like Reno made a video where he showed uh, somebody who went in the water, and uh, you know, you couldn't really tell when he got out uh, that, that, he was that, that he was wet. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and of course, in those heavy clothes, and if anybody had, they he could have just said, "I was fishing" or something like that, and stepped in the water. At any rate, it's uh, you. You know, you've done a great job. It's it's really mind blowing that this guy has not surfaced. It's just mind blowing. Yeah, they all but say they they always they, all, they always say stuff like, "Man, if if I was a detective and um, I just got handed the case and I was given a picture of the guy and his voice, I would be doing a jig. I'd be dancing up and down, you know. But that's not. Yeah, it didn't do anything. It hasn't helped, really, for some reason. No, it didn't. Yet. It might. Well, but. anyway, I'll let you go, Gray. It, okay. Yeah. It, and thanks a lot. I, I really I really appreciate your work, well, like everybody. Well, well, thank you very much. Oh. Appreciate it. Have a good okay, night. Okay, good night. Good night. Thanks. Yeah. That was weird. Somebody said, with, with a gun? Yeah, with a gun, Michelle. Yep, yep. What does that mean? I'm trying to make out what people are typing. It's really confusing stuff. Uh, it's Girl Code Central right now. Yeah, that's one of the things that always freaks me out the most about the case when I think about it in terms of what it was like is just just that 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 little and I have, you know, I, I've told you guys before I have my own experience where I probably felt just like they did prior to I mean the time I, I, I've said it before there's two times one time I was walking I was probably 11 years old, and this car pulls up and says, Get in the car! You know, I didn't even know who these people were. I just took off running like a bullet, right? Then the other time was that this, this uh, uh, day camp counselor dr had driven every one of the students home, and I was the last one left in the car. And I said, Yep, I live right here. And he just kept driving, right? He just kept driving. And I remember... Just literally, my heart started beating really fast, and I had my hand on the the door. And I was just, I don't, you know, it's weird. I don't know, even know how I was aware that something bad might be going to happen here. So, anyways, I was going to just jump out. And, uh, you know, I just was so panicked inside. And then a, mi then a minute later, he goes, he goes, oh, okay, yeah. He drove me back, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what in the hell was going on in this. There was something weird there. I'll never think that was just accidental. There's no way. And uh, because I said, I, yeah, I live right up here, and he just he, he just kept going. So here's the thing. I had that feeling, right? And that's where the comparison with me and them just totally stops, right? I had that absolute fear, heart-pounding shit. But in their story that fear that they had literally turned out to be a reality, an absolute nightmare. So imagine how scared they are. They're sitting there, and then, then they show up. And this guy shows up, and then he has them. They, they're they hoping he's just going to pass, but she was nervous because she started filming him, and then he pulls out a gun probably, says, get down the hill. Thanks, Billy Boy Blue. The only reason I donate money at all is BC Gray actually kidnapped me a year ago and drags me out here occasionally to make super chats at gunpoint. <laughs> that's right, everybody. We need super chats on the channel because that's the only, the, the ad revenue is none. You know, it's crazy. So... 
basically that's that's it that's what leads to our donations at the end of the month and you know i, I tell you guys this a I lot. am still I know it's hard loving times, freak. See no evil monkey. That's what I'm saying. United Pretend I'm a Kingdom. cup of coffee. Right? I'm still loving. Fr what does that say? Oh, United Kingdom. So if you just type in GB, it types in United Kingdom. Yeah, if you're a true crime YouTuber, don't expect your videos to get monetized, unless you're over a hundred thousand subs and you can contact an actual person and they go oh yeah let me take a look okay yeah i'll get that fixed for you the rest of us forget it i think he she said that just before the the well it's on the video apparently so i'm it's definitely going to be before he says hey guys like hey guys like that Hey guys, and then probably within 10 seconds he said, get down the hill. Because I think, uh, well, let, what I should do is play you the animation again for the people who haven't seen that one. Let's see. Yeah, so this is my animation here. Okay, this video right here. Oh, this is the, the too long, the too long version. This one is shorter. Okay. So this is when they're on the bridge. They're just having fun. She's taking pictures of the bridge. Robin Frost said, "Do you think this was planned or unplanned by the killer?" And did he know the girls prior, such as where they live? Do you think this was planned or unplanned by the killer? And did he know of the girls well, prior, I, I, such as where yeah. they lived, Gray? Well, I think, uh, I don't think, I think it's planned in terms of that he, he planned to go there and kill somebody. But I don't think he knew them. Okay? I could be totally wrong, but that's just my opinion. I don't think that... Uh, you know, when, I, when you say plan, yeah, I think he was out there planning on how to to trap somebody. But it wasn't like he didn't know them prior or anything like that. Now, but the all the people who believe in the geocaching theory would disagree. And that's becoming a really hot topic because it's really neato and, and cool. I'm not saying it's not possible. You know, might be totally possible. <laughs> Man, that makes it almost impossible. It might be possible. <laughs> um, I think he's from the area, but not Del. I don't think he's from Delphi. You know. Now the geocaching theory is kind of that there's this guy, this professor somewhere that did geocaching, and he. Uh, uh, Kelsey, you know, I guess you put geocaches out there, and then apparently Kelsey and him went to the same geocaching thing, and then he quit doing it at a certain time right after the... I don't know. It, it just... You'd have to go watch the... I'm not going to help you go find them either, okay? You'll have to go find the videos. I'm not interested in them. Hey, thank you, Carolina. Gray, you are a very intelligent person with great common sense. Well, thanks. I try to have common sense. But sometimes common sense is, is beaten out by the absurd that actually happened. Poor Billy boy, he steals you just to donate flushed face face with tears of joy. He steals me? I don't even know what that means. All right, so anyways, as we know, there, this photo here was the first one taken on the bridge. The next one was taken at 2.07. Okay, so here's the first one, and that's exactly how it went, I, I believe. She was here, and Abby was just behind her, and she's taking the picture because Libby was the one that took the pictures. So there you go, of the full length of the bridge. And she's exactly where 
I, it, where she's standing is exactly where I have it. Okay, and then she goes to platform number three, gets on it, turns around and then takes the next shot. And that's this one, looking back to where they came. Now back there, those are two metal barriers, not people. But if you're watching Dr. Oz, those are um, two ninjas with swords. So I don't know if you can see that, but I have them coming already. See back there, way back in the background? There, look at watch. So they look back, and he's already coming. He's moving kind of quick, so they're like, whoa, whoa, let's get out of here. And they head off towards the end. Libby's on the end of the bridge, and then this guy catches up. What I thought was hilarious, though, was... Here, watch. When you go on to the, um, the special... That was just done on HL, uh, not HL. Hey, Sean. Gray told me that if you donate enough head, sell me to you. <laughs> if, the, uh, if you watch the special that was just on IDTV, the John Walsh one, they made a guy that looked exactly like this guy. My 3D character here, they literally seemed like they were watching my animation here, and they made a guy that had the same everything. The, the hat color, the, you know, the same type of hat. The, it was just unbelievable. But they put a real person. But it was very similar. It was incredible. So it would be like this. I think the timing of this is about right. Yeah, see, I think it was kind of like that. Hey, guys. Get down the hill. Can you hear that? What? Can you hear that? Like, hey guys, get down the hill. Get down the hill. Yeah, it's hard to uh, explain it to people, you know, because it's just such a, it's almost connected to the down. Shadow Man. Be gone, Shadow Man. See, what you guys, you guys gotta, I wish you guys knew what it took to make this thing. Because look at right here. See this shadow right here? Can you guys make that out? How it goes like this, and then up, and then like that? I mean, if you guys knew what it, it you had, I had to build a 3D model that doesn't render, but only the shadow does. And I had to go right along that whole length, and... Even the uh, railroad ties, I had them going all the way down. And so the shadow matches up perfectly with the side rails right there. It's crazy. So it gives it way, makes it look way more real, you know. Like they're really on that bridge. And you also don't have to pay a $1,000 ha hazard pay to the actor. I gotta definitely get back more into doing some more animations and things. You know, I think what I'm gonna do soon is I'm gonna put together the entire Rexburg. It's not gonna be an animation, but I'll, I'm gonna make put together the entire case and go over it one segment at a time until we get through the, the whole thing. I don't know. Just a thought. Now, see, like, look at even right there. I have it where it's, you know, it's a little off, though. Can you see how there's that little light space right there? 
because I didn't quite have the, and, and a little bit right there, but it's enough where you're not, if you're not paying attention, you can't see it. Yeah, well, it, you know, she's actually having a good time here. You know, she, look how just, that's what's so weird about it. They're just having a good time. Now, the people who think that the killer was on the other side, the reason a lot of them think that is because you can't see them over here. Okay, but given how, let me ask you guys this. Just think back, if you were a girl that was 13, 14 years old, and you were on a bridge like that, and you saw a guy walking towards you from way back there, would you go towards that person and try to s squeeze by them? Or would you continue off to the end? I mean, just literally think about that for a minute. Hey, Andre, what's going on? Uh, you said run, but how would you? Why would you run though? In what direction would you run? Is what I was asking. Okay, so you would go. You would keep going the direction they're going and just get off the end, right? But there's when you get to the other side, they even say it on the video. I guess they say they have a discussion about there's nowhere to go when you get to the other side. Right, so none of, no, none of you would go towards him coming at you so you can pass him, right? Uh, amazingly, that probably would have worked because you would have caught up with him right in the middle of the bridge and then would have given you a lot more time, but nobody thinks like that. Yeah, I think he came from the north side myself. I think it's like 99% that he came from the north side. There's always that little chance that there is the other one. Yeah, I doubt it, Susanna. I think when you were 13, you would have went off the other end to get away from him. Trust me. Maybe now you would go towards them, yeah. But there is. What do you mean, but there is? Because he had them go down the hill, they already weren't thinking clearly. No, I think they were thinking really clearly. You know, they were talking to each other going, God, well, there's nowhere to go here. And then he caught up to them. And instead of it being something that they were scared about, but not actually, you know, being something bad, it turned out to be really bad. And then he um, most likely pulled out a gun from things I've heard and then had him go down the hill. Hey, Dadio Caspian Horses Rock, can you change your text? I can never even make out half of what it says. It looks like it's Chinese. <clears throat> I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want. I just can't read it. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's going on? Come on, Blue. No, oh, there you go. Now I can read it. But pick up another cool one, just not that one. That one's like, whoa. Yeah. It doesn't seem like this person... It is possible, though, 
that this is the only kill that he'll make. You know, that's the thing is sometimes that really is how it works. Just like uh, John Miller, the killer of April Tinsley, he, uh, they, the FBI profile on that one said that he probably, would, you know, he may have not killed ever again, but he's going to live near a school. And it was just, they were so accurate, it's mind-boggling. And by the way, next Wednesday is our the finale of Do you think he has left the Three USA? Men in a Mystery Season 2 on my show, a live stream. Wait, what did you say? Do you think he has left the United... No, I don't think he's left the United States. I think he's just going, Wow! They didn't catch me. Look at that. That's me. Yeah, there's cool. Um, we've had some good guests. The last... I didn't... I don't know... Uh, how was this week's episode? I heard it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty sweet. There was two people on, right? We had four people, or five on the screen at the same time, right? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it was a gun there, Nick. Yeah. In fact, when you see him walking... You know, it seems like he's propping something up under the jacket. Like he's got it in his hand, ready to go. Yeah, what makes you think he's in Delphi? Yeah, I don't know. See, here, here's, the, here's how it works, everybody. There's a lot of people who think they know who the killer is. And they know where he lives. So then you say, I don't know if he's from Delphi. And they go, yeah, he's from Delphi. Yep, yep. Because they think they know, right? Like, I don't even know if that's what you're talking about. But you see that a lot. You know, if, yeah, they, they agree with things that fit in. I don't, I don't have a clue. He could have been a trucker that drove by and just sort of hung out there knowing that it was a place that people would go and then in a three or four day period he got to know it a little bit so he knew how to cross the bridge and he had a little spot picked out under the bridge down there but then um, you know maybe they made a run for it and crossed the creek the crossing the creek part is kind of weird in a way right it's pretty cold outside uh, you know, it's not that much less visible over there. <laughs> I mean, you can really see, you can see the spot from the bridge, basically. Yeah, there's something, some kind of comment like, he's still behind us, right? And then Libby said, uh-huh. Or he's right behind me, or some, something like that. I don't know what the profile is. Well, they, there is a profile for this one. Here, how about we'll go try to find that? I can, I'll find it. Hold on. Now let's wave files. Hmm. 
Oh, there it is. Is that it? No. I'm just looking for this particular, I had a folder that had, let me see, all the different press conferences. Oh, there we go. Okay, nice. All right. <laughs> yeah, I know it's quiet. I'm trying to find. Is it this one? Yeah. So here's the original okay, one. I'm not suggesting that science. Here, I'll, uh, the profile though is this guy right here. He's an FBI agent. Good morning. As the assistant special agent in charge, um, my role is to... And that's Robert Ives right there. Jerry Holman. Um, I don't know who this guy... I think this guy here is the mayor. Supervise and lead the FBI's criminal investigations across the state of Indiana. Nine days ago, um, we had an agent that was participating in the search for the, the missing victims. And from that moment until uh, this morning, uh, we have stood shoulder to shoulder with our law enforcement partners here. Yeah, but they, he walked across the bridge once. He went across the bridge, down the hill. The only person, people that have, would have memory of him walking across the bridge would have been Abby and Libby, and they're not alive to be witnesses. The FBI plays an important support role in this investigation. Um, it, it, this joint investigation. I'm very humbled by the response uh, that, that the, uh, the resources uh, that are under my direction have brought uh, and hopefully the contributions that we are making. On any given day, we have 20 FBI agents that are uh, here providing investigative uh, help, whether that's running down leads, um, conducting interviews, uh, helping with lead tracking system, um, providing intelligence uh, analysis support, providing technical assistance. Uh, every night I uh, update our uh, FBI headquarters uh, it, uh, to our deputy assistant. Yeah, and he didn't walk them ac across the bridge. He, uh, they, were, they were already almost across, you know, maybe two-thirds of the way, and then he hustled across. Abby's really slow because she'd, she'd never crossed it before. And then Libby was off the end of the bridge, and then he kind of caught up. I don't know how, you know, maybe they were only halfway across when he started. But you're definitely not going to go walk back towards them or him. So he caught up to them. And I think she said, he's right behind me, right? And when he, she said that, you sort of think, well, gosh, he's probably somebody that they may have seen earlier. Unless they'd already seen him coming across the bridge saying, God, who's that guy? Look, there's a guy way back there. He's coming, he's coming across the bridge. And then later she said, he's right behind me, isn't he? You know, referring to the guy that they'd already seen. Because obviously... Let's say they're a halfway or two-thirds of the way across, and they look back, and they're not going to always just keep looking forward, right? You're going to look, you, you know, people look around, and then you look across the bridge, and you see this guy coming towards you, right? So they might have kept continually seeing him, and then eventually she turned on her camera. Do you get what I'm saying? Director, and as the superintendent mentioned, this has been briefed to the FBI director on two occasions. So whatever resource that the FBI has available, whether it's here in the state. Yeah, we don't know when the earlier was. Was it just that they saw him coming at them while they were on the bridge, seeing him coming? Or was it like he was on the trail? You know, we, we don't have a, We're not going to get to know the answer to that. State of Indiana or nationally, we have brought those resources and we will continue to do so. Although I will say there, when they were dropped off at 137, uh, you've got, let's see almost uh, 20 minutes 
137 they were dropped off. No, that'd be 23, 30 minutes is when the first, the second photo was taken on the bridge. And it was early on on the bridge. So they must have been doing, hanging out, walking really slowly because it's only a six minute walk from where they were dropped off to the start of the bridge, right? So they must have been just kind of, you know, lollygagging around, uh, a term my mom would say. Um, we were committed to working around the clock, as we have been over the last nine days, and will continue to do so until this case is solved. To the members of the community... Um, no, it doesn't, maybe he didn't see the cell phone, Marcus. Maybe he didn't want to pick up the phone as well, because if you pick up the phone, now you're carrying something that might ping. So he probably just thought, ah, they, they didn't record me, so I don't care. So I don't think it's that weird at all. When I met with our behavioral analysis unit uh, and, and their expertise and their experience, it is oftentimes even unwitting uh, that, that a member of the... I know it makes the story more sort of sexy and interesting if everything's kind of weird and everything, but sometimes it's just, you know, if he had the phone concealed, probably threw the phone on the ground, he didn't see it, and even if he did see it, maybe he didn't want to take it because it would ping. Community may have information that is germane to this investigation. And I'd like, I'd like the community to, uh, to, to, to go back nine days and go back to the afternoon of February 13th, Monday, February 13th, and, and just think if you had an interaction with an... All right, but he didn't know that, that it was used for that, right? Because Libby concealed the phone down low and then actually uh, maybe even put it inside of her pant at one point. So who knows? And then maybe at one point... Libby dropped the phone on purpose so that it wouldn't be, you know, I, I don't know. It just isn't really, you know, it's unfortunate. It's just like in the uh, uh, Jody Arias case, right? She put the phone in the, or the, the camera in the washing machine to destroy it all um, with bleach and everything. And it did. It destroyed the camera. The only thing it didn't destroy was the SD card. And they were able to retrieve the deleted images two of which showed Travis bleeding all over the floor, and then there's a whole bunch of them of him in the shower. Okay, now I could say, ooh, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, like a, look how she left that SD card in there to taunt them. Do you see how she did that? Wow. No, no, she just didn't realize that wouldn't work, and maybe he didn't realize that the phone had video on it, right? individual who uh, inexplicably canceled an appointment that you had had together or uh, an individual called into work sick um, and um no we, we don't know when you say accidental if he saw the phone and he wanted to take it he would have taken it he left the phone there or he you know there's the only options are there's no accidentally left the phone there okay there's no chance at that I know everybody thinks that's a great idea, too, in there. I can see it. There's no chance that he accidentally left it there, okay? What it mean, what it, there's only these options, that he didn't see the phone or he saw the phone and thought, well, I don't want to take it because it'll ping. That's it. He didn't go, ooh, yeah, okay, I'm going to get that phone. I've got it. And then he forgot, and then it was an accident. <laughs> there, there's no chance, okay? canceled a, a, an important appointment or a social engagement and at the time gave what would have been a plausible explanation uh, my cell phone broke or i had a flat tire on my car but in retrospect be safe jamie that excuse no longer holds water that 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 may be yeah so here, this guy's doing the profile right here work sick um and um canceled a, 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 an important appointment or a social engagement and at the time gave what would have been a plausible explanation uh, my cell phone broke or I had a flat tire on my car. But in retrospect, that excuse no longer holds water. That, 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 may, be, that may be important. Likely so are behavioral indicators. Yeah, see, here's the thing is, he, might, he probably saw the phone. He didn't care about it because he didn't see that she had been filming him. Okay, she had the phone sort of held uh, hidden down by her side and then eventually it was sort of put in maybe her pocket or something like that because it didn't have any more useful video. However, there might be audio. 
okay? There was, I guess there was some video of the ground and stuff like that, okay? Doesn't that just make more sense than it, that he accidentally left the phone there? Okay, there's a phone. I'll, I'll make sure to remember that. That this uh, individual may have exhibited since. Yes, it's 100% him. There's only one killer, everybody. Are we still doing the thing? That, oh, there's two sketches, so now there's two killers. Okay, there's one killer. There's always been one. It's never been confusing that there's one, except in the original press conference when the guy wasn't quite sure. Okay, to me, it was absolutely obvious. You've got this guy walking. He's the one that said, hey, guys, and down the hill. There's no doubt about it. He's on video. So saying that there's another person is just somebody absolutely guessing that there's another person. There is zero evidence at all. The afternoon of May 13th. Did this individual now there's, travel yeah. unexpectedly? Yeah, it's a waste of time, though, Holly. Okay, so the thing is, is people, she goes, it's likely him, but I always think of the possibility. Yes, everybody thinks of the possibilities. What we don't do is verbalize the ones that are really outlandish and meaningless. Because at this point, we know for sure that the voices we heard are the guy that was on the video. Okay, 100%. So he's walking, he says, hey guys, and down the hill. Right? So if you're going to go, well, there might be this other guy, it's not going to help you out at all. You'll spend 16,000 years trying to figure out somebody that doesn't exist. You know, a uh, sort of a, well, it's, a pos it's possible, right? Yep, it is possible. And just like the aliens coming down from Zeta Minor, uh, there is a chance if you believe that there's life on other planets. Did they change their appearance? Did they shave their beard, uh, cut their hair, change the color of their hair. The superintendent mentioned the clothes that this individual was wearing in the photo. Did they, did they change the way they, they dress? Did their behavior change? Did their sleep pattern is different now? Um, did they start abusing? No, but here's the thing is, see, everybody thinks, go, go, Gray. Well, hold on, let me do it for you. Go, Gray, you're bullying. You don't let people have their ideas. Well, yeah, he did. He let, Let them, them type, type it in, in and then he rebutted, rebutted what they, they said. said. Well, I mean, they want to be able to say what they say and have you agree with it. Well, I don't, I don't do it that way. If I see something I don't agree with, I just let you know that I don't agree with it. Okay, but I just want to say something and then let everybody go, Wow, that's such a great idea. But it, it just really isn't a good idea, so I'm just going to point out that it's not a good idea. Okay, great, thanks, bye. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how it goes, all right? So that was a conversation between two people there. And that's kind of the uh, way I think. Yeah. It, like, if you don't know the case, go back and watch my videos, not the other people who come up with the conspiracy theories. Although I know those are more interesting and they seem to get more views because it's like, wow, that's so cool, man. I got, there was a paddle in his shirt and he maybe canoed up the... Okay. Using uh, uh, drugs or alcohol, uh, where the, whereas they would not have. Uh, have they been anxious, nervous, irritable? Have they followed this case uh, um, and what the media is putting out um, with a with a sense that is not normal? Um, uh, have they had ongoing discussions regarding um, their their whereabouts on that afternoon or or thereafter? Please, if you have that information call that into the tip line. Uh, after this press conference, the FBI will be putting out um, a, a series of these indicators on our, uh, on our social media, so it'll be uh, available, um, not only to the, to the citizens of this community, but across the state of Indiana and then uh, uh, nationally as well. We'll also be utilizing digital billboards, um, uh, and, and in any way we can spread this, this message, we will. I'll just finalize my remarks just to say that uh, uh, to my law enforcement partners behind me, to the, to the community at large. Nine days ago, the FBI stood shoulder to shoulder with you. We're not going anywhere. We will be here until this case is solved, and I am confident this case will be solved. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite Captain Dave Burston, Chief Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police, to the podium. Thank you, Tony. We do have some new information for you today. 
Uh, it's in the form of a, an audio file uh, from the cell phone that Liberty German had with her at the time. We're not going to play everything that we have, uh, but Liberty had the presence of mind uh, to turn on her video camera. Uh, again, we're not going to be able to share everything with you, but we are going to share this audio clip with you momentarily with the hope that somebody will recognize this voice. And I want to be very clear that what you're about to hear is just four short words. Excuse me, three words. Down the hill. You're going to hear... Yeah, notice how they... Well, we also hear the get down the hill, but we don't want to confuse you, so we're just going to switch it back to three. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't... Uh, here's the thing is, you know, the way that guy is dressed, he'd be smart to dress that way every single day. You know why? Because every single person that lives in Indiana looks exactly like that. It's the greatest... It's, it, it's amazing. I remember seeing videos of people walking around uh, after the Delphi incident. And they all looked like that. They had jeans, blue jacket, everything. It's amazing. Maybe they didn't have a, a paperboy hat, however. Hear this played four times. The audio quality is not superb, but there's enough there that somebody could recognize this person's voice. And as Superintendent Carter said, not to rationalize away. If you hear this today and you think, my God, that sounds like fill in the blank, call us. Make an anonymous tip. Tell us who you... Yeah, this guy, look, he looks pretty sweaty back there. Hmm. <laughs> you think it is. Let us investigate it. If it's not the right person, they'll just be out a little bit of time and they'll be cleared and they can go on and they'll never know that you called. But you may tell us who the right person was. And you could be the person that helps us to solve this horrible yeah, I guess all those those kids that were partying in uh, Florida, they're serial killers, right? Because they probably killed many people by because they thought it would be fun to go party. They just aren't going to, nobody's going to know who they killed, though. All right. Micah, play the clip, please. Did you play it one more time? Oh, really? Truth sleuth? <laughs> so that audio clip later today will be available on the Indiana State Police website. You can simply go to our website and add the extension slash Delphi.htm. There will be... Well, the, the thing is, we don't know who is, you know, nobody knows who the killer is. Okay? But I know it's not, you know, there's some people you know it's not. on that website that talks about the reward that is being uh, collected now. Sergeant Slocum will talk more about that, the amount of uh, money that's been raised towards solving this case and tell us. Could this be somebody that knew that the girls were going to be there at that time? That's a possibility. Nothing is off the table. Yeah, so back then they thought more of that. And I don't know, Carter seems to sometimes think that. So, you know, that, I, when people ask me my opinion, I don't think that the killer knew that Abby and Libby specifically were going to be at the bridge that day. I don't think he knew them. But like I said before, that could be totally wrong. You know, I, I don't know. You know, maybe maybe the geocaching theory is right, but I just, I don't think so. It just sounds like some fanciful story that sort of sounds kind of neat and all that but it really when it's all said and done there's no evidence behind this behind it all it's just somebody you know it, it sounds cool and interesting
fill in the blank. <laughs> fill in the bank. <laughs> hey, this sounds like fill in the bank. Oh, and that's pretty funny because there's a guy named Phil that this one, you know, the EVP uh, whack job person. She always was into a guy named Phil. Maybe that was, ooh, maybe that was code. Nobody ever thought of that. Yeah, one of the the whack job EVP readers now who originally was doing the Delphi case would bug me constantly about this guy that she thought was the killer. Yeah, it was unbelievable. But his name happened to be Phil. Isn't that funny? Maybe that's where she got that from. What is the name of the killer? Oh, you mean Phil? That's what I'm talking about. That's what you said. Oh, he said, Phil, what am I talking about? Oh, that's amazing. Did you hear that, everybody? It was really crystal clear. What? Um, <laughs> Oh my God. Listen, if you are dumb enough to believe in EVP readings, please unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Thank you very much. Okay, those the people who have EVP channels are scamming everybody. They are total whack jobs to even, you know, isn't it just embarrassing that people do that shit and think that they're really helping, but they know what they're doing is totally bogus, right? They probably watch other people's shows, get a good idea of a case. Uh, you know, for example, I could go, let's see. Let's just say there was an imaginary case. Okay, yeah, Jim Smith, he went to Safeway store, he got in his car, and then he drove down the street, and then a taxi cab pulled up to him, and then he was killed. And there was another person in the taxi cab. And then he, he was also fighting with his girlfriend. Then I could... Now, now that I have that basic information, I could go like this. Who did it? Who did it? I am. I am. I am. Oh, do you hear that? Everybody says the boyfriend of his, the girlfriend that he had. He, she's seeing somebody else. You hear that? The boyfriend. Yeah. Hey, come on, Ava. What, do you believe in EVP readers? Wow. My God. If you if you actually believe in EVP readings, you should immediately um, call, use some of the stimulus money, call a psychologist, and make an appointment. I'm sure you can get a good deal at this time. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, everybody. I wonder if it's better with it. Let me hear what this sounds like with this one. Hold on. What are you talking about? Yeah, it would it would definitely stimulate the economy. Hey, hey, everybody, everyone out there that believes in EVP readings, um, use some of your stimulus to call a psychologist and make an appointment. You'll definitely get money back in the hands of people that really can't help you at all. But uh, you know, thank you. I know they they work they help out like you know. The only th problem I have with psychologists are the ones that help free really shitty people from prison. Those are the ones I have problems with. You know? Like, you know, the psychologists that they go, he's been absolutely wonderful. He understands his mistakes. I know he's killed 14 people, but I think he's ready to leave. I know he deemed him, um, he was crazy at the time. So we're ready to let him go now, and thank you. Okay, well, how about this, psychologist? He gets to live at your house for the first six months. 
Oh, wow. You know what? I forgot my last notes that I took were they actually said that uh, he needs a little bit more time. No, they just do it all the time. Look at look what goes on in... Um, I'm just making it up with the 14 serial killers. You know, but... In Canada, for example. You know, the... The guy that went onto a, a bus... Sat next to a, a young kid. You know, 18, 19 year old kid. Listening to his headset. And then he just started stabbing the guy to death. This, this Asian guy. He was like... Uh, Mong. H-M-O-N-G. Stabbed him to death, then he cut his head off. All right? So everybody was, you know, they were off the bus, and he was the only guy left on the bus because he kept stabbing the guy. And then he ended up cutting the guy's head off, and then he walked to the front of the bus and showed everybody out the door the head. And, um, you know, he was deemed mentally insane, and uh, now he, he got out in five years. You know? So you know some psychologist was playing a part in, in that, saying... Yeah, so here's what I was wishing was that same psychologist who let him out should have him stay at his, her house or his house for six months. Of course, she'd probably lock the door at night hoping that your head didn't get chopped off. Mm. See, here's David... Uh, Petri, he's, he's doing the troll action. Well, his name was Jim Smith, David. Yes, his name is David Smith. And here, here, here's the thing. I bet you David Petri is a psychologist, and he doesn't like it that that we, we all know this actually happens. But he wants me to get the name out there. Yeah, see you later. See you later, David. I can tell what, what you're doing here. Have a good one. Yeah, because when, when I started the show, I, I wrote down a bunch of the names. I did a bunch of research on it. Everybody knows that it happens all the time. When there's a mentally insane person that they, they deem mentally insane, it takes a psychologist to approve. Okay? So we can go back in time and look up the, uh, remember the case of Walter R. Hibbert? Now, he actually got put into a facility for a while. Then he served jail time. Then at one point he got out and lived a nice, another, hell, I don't know, 60 years. Now, you get all these idiots that show up. They, they just, it's just amazing. Like, I'm going to have the names. Yes, it was uh, John R. Johnson, man, uh, 1927. He did it. Yeah. Go, go troll somewhere else, David. Have a good one. I mean, how do you think people get deemed when they're in trial? They go, they go there and they get deemed mentally insane and they get put into a mental institution because a psychologist convinced them of it, right? You remember the girl a few years back? Uh, she stabbed her mom like 33 times. Up in a bath, and she was just crazy in court, making these faces at the camera and stuff. And, you know, she was deemed mentally ill, not, and she couldn't stand trial. So at some point, some psychologists will say, well, with the proper medication, she'll be just fine. And again, that same person who came up with that ruling should then have them live in their house for six months. I mean, have a house full of them at some point. You know, you let three or four of them out at the same time, you can just have a party. No, oh, yeah, you mean on this one right here? What, uh, what do you mean? Haven't you been here on the donation nights? Yeah, this is Texas Equisearch, 700 bucks. Um, the Kyron Horman Foundation, $700, earmarked for the um, Allison Watterson project, or, you know, not project, the, the case. And then um, the DNA Doe Project, 300 NICMEC, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 
That's what NCMEC is, 200. And then the First Responders Children Fund, 1,000 we just did. Okay? So there you go. So for all the trolls and f idiots out there, at least we go out and try to make a difference. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just explained I explained it. You mean, what do you mean still Sean Beecham? <laughs> Was there something I did that you would say uh, still did I, did I piss you off? Yeah, they, uh, like right around the second to the last day of the month we donate. Okay? And if you can find, I know John Lorden donates to a bunch of stuff all the time, but when, when you can point me to another one in the true crime world that I love does, still. let me know. Okay? Beaming face with smiling eyes, cherry blossom, see no evil monkey. Yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the uh, psychologist, Gray? Uh, no, I was doing a hypothetical story. You know that exists. Let me ask you this. Does anybody out there not think or, or hasn't heard of cases where they get an expert psychologist in there to testify and the person gets a, you know, they're deemed mentally insane, and then you know that person after a while, just like the guy in Canada, after they've been treated and everything, they got to make sure that, being treated works so then all of a sudden the guy gets out where nobody else would get out they'd be in there for 30 40 years and the reason i have the total up there is because it's our you know the freak family uh, we're all donating, right? So all the money that I get in super chats at the end of the month, I, you know, like some months I do like a, a, a ludicrous percentage of what I bring in. And, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's f cool for everybody to see. That's why it's on the screen right there. And when I say that, I mean, it makes everybody realize, okay, we got a goal, you know, maybe next month we do four or 500 or something, and then we're up to 3,400. Makes me feel good that it's up there. What about you? Yeah, smash that like button. Yeah, the, the problem with the Delphi case is there's just so little information that anybody has outside of what has been released. And I don't think anybody here at all is owed anything to be able to see, um, like, the whole video. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I actually think that they should release the entire video up until down the hill. Okay, every single bit of it and let other people that might be have some skills look at it and they might see something that they miss, like crowdsource that. Now the crime scene itself, forget it. Okay, we don't we don't need to get to know any of that stuff. And we don't need to know either. You still there, Trevor? What did, what did you think of the, uh, I mean, the numbers up there? You think it's okay to have that there? We got 265 uh, members right now. I've lost a few, a uh, bunch of Patreon after the coronavirus. Uh, you know, they, I don't know, it kind of sucks, but I totally understand it, you know. Yeah, they, I guess it, there's some footage of the ground and stuff like that. Maybe you can see his legs kind of going off the end of the bridge or something. I'm 
fired out of midnight. Hit the like one, 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 hit the Yeah, the thing is with the, the new, the small business disaster relief, they should actually use it, they should be able to use it to hire back some of the people they just laid off and were put on unemployment. I hope they do do that. So you actually pay them and they do whatever, they work from home, and I'm kind of thinking that's what it is. I think the unemployment sort of just bridges the gap until the paychecks start coming in on these forgivable loans that they're going to give out. First suspect is a cop. Yeah, well, you'll just get a check from the government. No? Uh, how about turn off the audio of the video and just let us have the video? edit out that part I don't we don't need to hear what uh, I'm just saying the video of up until down the hill I've, I've I just said that yeah a lot of these actors right now should really be donating a lot of their money you know they're always so good about telling people how Hey, everybody should be paying taxes on this and that, and they have just a shitload of money. So why don't they start donating millions upon millions a piece? I mean, I'm not talking one million. Um, you know, how about Will Smith? Uh, donate 25 million. Okay, I'm sure you can afford it. All right, and all these other people should be just donating. There should be billions of dollars of donations, but they're they're always hypocritical. They always say everybody else should do this but they don't want to do it they're full of shit in other words you know like how much money is uh, you know ben affleck and what's his what's his buddy's name <laughs> in goodwill hunting what's his face uh, i bet though they don't donate shit you know comparatively Yeah, ten million's just nothing. Yeah, Oprah should donate a hundred million dollars. She's worth billions, okay? But they gotta keep a little extra, you know, they probably you know, it's just Yeah, Matt Damon, right? That guy's a clown. He's always bitching and moaning about everybody. But he doesn't what does he do? You know, he does the photo op shit. How about hey hey uh, Damon, how about you donate like half of your movie revenue to help people okay you're still gonna do great yeah fox news donated a million they could probably do more too but they're not hypocritical like the actors they everybody that works at fox news donates a lot all, a ton of money all the time that's uh like a charity is a big thing that republicans do okay now democrat there's a lot of democrats that donate but it's never it's not the same it's not in their dna as much you know, because they're more about, like, the government should be giving people stuff, right, instead of charity. Now, you're going to go, well, that's not true, Greg, because I'm a Democrat. And I, you know, I, I get it. I, that's why I said not everybody, okay, but just realize that your brethren aren't the ones that donate a lot, okay? Let's put it that way. while they get rich I don't get it I get so confused I wish people typed in full sentences no it's okay miscus I know that you a lot of, a lot of you don't have uh, the funds anymore so I mean our the donation we make at the end of next month might be less than normal but at least we're still doing it I mean there was a time where we were just doing like 150 to 200 dollars right well, this year, man, 
uh, because of the channel membership and the uh, you know the super chats on top of that I've just decided that I can I'll do a bigger percentage as well you know and so I think we're making a difference I think the next month we gotta we gotta get back to the DNA dough project though Yep, everybody does what they can. Wants to donate ten dollars here and there through an app and yeah. Yeah, like yeah, what about Jeff Bezos, for example. <laughs> you know, these people that are worth $60 billion or whatever the hell they're worth, how come they're not just helping out in a ridiculous way? It's just, uh, you know, I don't understand that part. I'll tell you one, one guy that uh, is, is more of, you know, he's a Democrat, but uh, Bill Gates, like that guy donates so much money. <laughs> that guy, I mean, he could probably even do more, but, you know, you really can't. And he's going to give almost all of his money to charity when he dies, too. So it's, he, he's kind of like a one-of-a-kind type person. Yeah, there's a lot of just really greedy people out there. It's amazing. Thanks, Kim F. Sharp. Let me, are you a piano teacher? <laughs> or do you sing in that? Well, I don't even know how to, how to refer to that. Or maybe you're a nurse. I can't remember. Oh, you harp and sing. Okay. I learned how to play the piano, but I, I didn't actually learn how to read I just memorized songs I was I, it was kind of weird I should have tried to actually learn thanks for donating oh yeah I don't I don't actually ship it yeah sorry about that and my don't my autograph isn't really worth anything are you kidding me I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm a youtuber man. Uh, yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? Imagine is not a happy song. And what does it have to do with this? You know? Like they're singing that song, Imagine. What does it have to do with anything what we're dealing with right now? It's like, imagine there's no, you know, heaven and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> wow, thank you. I can't wait to be on a respirator and thinking, God, there's nothing after this. I mean, you guys, you guys suck. You know, I think, you know, look at these, these politicians out there right now. They're talking about, oh, hell yeah, we're going to use this to push our green agenda. Here we go. Uh, you know, screw you. You know, how about we just get through this and we'll get back to what we were doing. We were kicking ass. We were just absolutely thriving as a country and um, economically. And this thing just literally just. It's crazy what happened. It's unbelievable. And as I've said before, everybody, next time they got to do my Nona idea. Nobody owes nobody anything. You turn off all the stock markets all around the world. Everybody's given immediately. They're sent checks to just buy food. And they stay in their house for a month to 45 days. And except when they're going out to go get food. And when they go to get food, they have to wear a, an N95 mask. Okay? And they stayed over 45 days. Uh, they don't owe anything for their rent. They don't owe anything for electricity. They don't owe anything for anything at all because nobody owes nobody anything. And then when the 45 days is up, you just turn everything back on again. Everybody goes right back to work and nothing happened. Okay? 
It would be as if you were in a coma for 45 days straight. And it actually would work, but people are too greedy to actually do it. Oh yeah, Chloe. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at Chloe right there. Come here, Chloe. Oh God, she's just like a. She's kind of like a cat, you know. When you pick up Chloe, see? She's really. Um, look at when you look at her, you think, "Wow, Smile she's so gray, cute." Smile, gray, X right? face, blowing a kiss. <laughs> Thanks, Sean Beecham. She has the ears like a. Uh, I don't know what you call that. But listen. Um, she shits in my slippers. And I know that makes a lot of you happy, right? She shits in my slippers. And she shits on the, like this little garbage can lever that you press where the lid pops open, okay? So she's just like a, she's a hellion. A, a, a demon. <laughs> You get you wouldn't believe how she actually plays with uh, with blue. I mean, just bites him in the face, bites him in the ear, bites him in the tail, bites him in the you know, just all over the place. And blue's just oh god, can you get me the hell out of here? Right? Yep, yep. There you go. <laughs> It's just so lazy. Oh, man. Yeah, totally nagger. It's crazy. Okay, let me see if I... I'm going to try to find that email that had the... Uh... Oh, there it is. Okay, this is where my wife works right here. Look at Watch. This is really cool. Let me switch screen so you can see it. So here we go. So this is all the the uh, cops thanking the nurses for what they're doing. And this was just a couple days ago. Yeah, she shits in my slippers, Audra. I know that makes you happy, but yeah. Yes, put the nurse symbol in there. The medical symbol. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out who's filming here, though. It's like, you're right in the road. What's she doing? Like running? What the hell? Oh, there maybe there's more people down there. Oh. 
God. Well, anyways, that was just the police appreciating the nurses at uh, a hospital. That's the one my wife works at. I've dropped her off at that same door about 50 times when her, when her car breaks down or something. It was, you know, it was pretty funny. I know this is, I'm making fun of her right now, but this morning her battery wasn't working, so I, I had bought her that really cool jump starter. And I showed her how to use it, but maybe I wasn't quite clear enough because uh, what she did was she put the thing on the battery, right, and then turned it on and then just took it off, put it back in the car, shut the hood, and then tried to start the car. <laughs> I was like, no, you, you have to kind of keep it on and then start the car, then you can take it off. It, it was pretty funny. It was just... The, what? I send cherry blossom, cherry blossom, cherry blossom, cherry blossom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty funny. I say, great, help me! It's not working. It's not working. I go, where is it? Oh, I put it back in here. What do you mean? You gotta need, leave it connected. <laughs> That's what's supplying the power. Yeah, and nobody answered that question because uh, that's just a troll question right there. Oh, God, just don't answer it, okay? Uh. See, whenever you answer a question like that by idiots, they, um, you know, you give them what they wanted because it makes it seem like they somebody really thought they were serious, okay? But they weren't. Charlotte, you're making your you're you're sounding kinda you're you're playing into the troll. Okay? Sometimes when somebody asks something, just figure out that they're just being a troll, okay? Okay, you don't need to you know, just everybody isn't a good person. Art Cargill or whatever the hell that thing is. Art Cargal is a troll, okay? That's why they ask that question. There and now they'll come back and say no, I really was curious. And then they're being passive aggressive because they're trying to make it seem like you were the one who just didn't understand. Okay? It's really obvious. Yeah. And if, if they don't immediately come back with, you're right, I was being an ass, then they're removed. Okay? If they come back with, no, I really wanted to know. I thought that's what you said. Awesome. What do you mean awesome? No, it's it's not good. You gave the troll what they wanted. Anyone have any theories on what? Yep, 303 still watching. I don't even have the lines open anymore. Well, I think the theories are all just kind of used up, right? That's the thing is, do you have one? I mean, here's the thing. It doesn't, here's what doesn't matter, everybody. It doesn't matter at all how anybody got to right here, okay? If there was a guy over here waiting and they came across or he was over there and he did. The only thing that really matters is really from right here onward. Down the hill. They were found right there across the shallow area. They were found right in that area. And, uh, and then what happened there? Because right here they were still alive right at this point, And he's coming at them. So whether they walked, walked on, turned around, or they came across this way, it's... Kind of irrelevant. Yeah. I know sometimes we go off topic, but that's because there's, you know, after you've gone over it 50,000 times, it, 
it's hard to come up with something new. And then I was getting the comments. Same old thing, great. Well, you know what? I'm just talking about it because it needs to be still out there. Okay, I don't have anything new. You know, the only thing that was new today was that they found the phone in the proximity of the girls. So maybe that was like right around in this area. You know. I don't know if you'd say proximity if it was over here. Could have been. Yeah, I mean, that's a theory, but it's just there's zero evidence of it. See, I like to do theories that have some evidence. There's no evidence at all that there was a, another person. Huh? No, there's, there's no other sounds in there. It's just we hear what we hear. Yeah, see, see what I told you guys? Didn't I tell you that that person was a troll? Yeah, see you later. Have a good one. Yeah. See, uh, what, I, what I try to do, as I say often, is you, you find the facts in the case, the ones that are knowable and known, and then speculate reasonably on those. And there's just nothing to suggest that there's another person. So it's like, how do you theorize on it when there's no evidence whatsoever that there's a, th a second killer? Uh, well, I'll show my version of it because mine's better, but not to, you know. That's if I can find it. Yeah, this is the one I made. No, there's no canoe paddle in his pen. No, there's not a pipe down his right leg. No, there's no GoPro camera on his left shoulder. See, what shows you is how much the camera is moving around. Because look at the edges that I'm, I'm showing you. I'm stabilizing the bridge. So you can see how he actually moves, right? Uh, I don't know why they don't, like, incorporate this. At law, en law enforcement should actually take this and say, okay, see how he moves? Okay, but they don't want to because it wasn't them that did it, right? I've sent it to them, and it's like, no, I stabilized the bridge instead of having this weird motion thing going on in the middle where you stabilize him by his stomach or something, all right? How do you know your arm's broken? I mean, why, what are you doing on the show if your arm's broken? That doesn't make any sense. Like, you've been commenting and, you know, conversing on the show, and you have a broken arm and it's swollen and everything. It just kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, yes, go to the doctor. Guys. 
Yeah. Like if I had a broken arm, I wouldn't be watching a YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just now you 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 uh, you just went outside and you tripped. I just took my dog out and tripped over a cement frog. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't a garden gnome? Okay, a uh, frog, and my arm is literally swollen already. I didn't put the phone down, took my dog out, and that's when it happened. Literally, okay, five minutes ago, okay. Yeah. I think it was a, it was a garden gnome, though. Daisy. Yeah, so why don't you, um, you know, quit chatting. If you think you broke it, what makes you think you broke your arm? It, maybe it's swollen, sure. Well, hell no. You shouldn't wait till the morning. Yeah, you can get uh, a blood clot. Uh, you don't want to do anything like that. But what makes you think it's broken? Daisy. I mean, it might be swollen, but what makes you believe it's broken? Is it like flopping around in the... Ice elevation. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's if it, she thinks it's broken, she needs to go in right now. You don't sleep overnight and do ice and elevation. You know, you can ice and elevation while you're waiting for an ambulance or somebody to pick you up, but uh, she needs to get in there like in two seconds. That was kind of weird. I was like, whoa, what is she? Uh, I mean, I just scrolled up and she just made a normal comment like two minutes before. I guess she left. I don't know. Hopefully she listened to what we said and took off and went to the doctor. Guys. 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 You know, it does seem like he's got like kind of like a longer torso than normal people. You know, like he doesn't have very long legs. I don't think he was ever planning on abducting anybody, this guy. I think he went there to kill, and that was it. There were, you know, when I guess you can abducting means that you force somebody to go somewhere off um, against their will. So I guess making him go across the creek, you could say, "Oh well, he kidnapped him." You know, people get charged for that all the time. But at the same, I don't think he had anything to do with like he was gonna kidnap him or anything. That, he wasn't trying to abduct anybody. He was going. He went there to kill. Oh, that's okay. It's okay, Daisy. That's all right. No problem. So your arm's swelling after you took a Percocet. What, 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 could, what could that be, an allergic reaction?
Okay, so are you saying you broke your arm or what? Because a minute ago you said that you're, you said, guys, I'm going to tell you the truth, and that's that I took a 10 milligram Percocet about an hour ago, but I just noticed it's swelling bad. I didn't trip on a frog. I, I'm sorry I lied about. I lied everybody. I'm sorry. Okay, you didn't trip on a frog, but do you think your arm is broken or not? What made your arm get s swollen? Yeah. The thing about Garrett Kurtz is he does look like like the exact combination of the new and old sketch. If you combine the two, just like they say, I mean, you got to admit like Garrett Kurtz is definitely a, an interesting person, right? You've got a guy that murdered somebody, choked him to death, strangled him to death, whatever. And uh, then he actually has been on and his friend, you know, knew Ron Logan. Pictures of the property, which is about 200 and something yards from where they were found. See, that's just weird. I mean, how many people are killers that just live in that area? You don't need to send me a picture of anything. I'm, I'm not really interested in looking at it. Uh, I don't need proof that your arm's swollen. If your arm's swollen and you think it's broken, then call the ambulance. We don't need to keep talking about it. As a matter of fact, I'm telling you right now, if you broke your arm, do not make any more comments and call uh, 911 and get somebody out there, okay? That's it. You think so, Rick Raven? Do you think maybe Garrett Kurtz um, had a little extracurricular activity? Is that what you're talking about? Or? Wow, that's so interesting, Bo. Wow, did you hear that, everybody? Okay, good luck, Daisy. Well, I, I have it at different speeds, okay? The first one is the regular speed. This one. Delphi community, how grateful I am. You, um, you inspire people that you don't even understand, and you don't even understand why. Uh, information's being released today is the result of literally thousands and thousands of hours of extraordinary investigative efforts. Yeah, see, that's the thing, is I can understand maybe the car... But the video, I could, I could do the same thing in a couple, like uh, maybe four or five hours. So I hope that didn't take thousands of hours. 
by Delphi, Carroll County, the FBI, the Indiana. What you do is you export each frame of the video as an individual image and then you line them up in a program and then once you have them all lined up like you line up a portion of the bridge and then once you have it all lined up you can then crop out the edges to show only what you want to show maybe not a portion of Abby who's most likely in the video as well you're just removing the portion that you want people to see the state police and countless other agencies this community surrounded us well, i think garrett curse looks like a combination of the two images he's kind of a younger face but has facial hair i think he looks a little bit like him yeah. i mean but so what you know, the sketch is just a likeness. It's not a photograph. Everybody pretends it's a photograph and does overlays. <laughs> That's the part that really pisses me off. Like you take the sketch and do an overlay on somebody and say, look, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Like, what are you doing? It's not, you know, you might do an overlay if, it's, if you have two photographs of people you think are the same person and you want to line them up. But uh, that's not what we got. That's not what a sketch is. Overlays are a joke with a sketch, okay? Some 26 months ago. So as a matter of fact, anytime you watch a video of anybody doing an overlay, immediately change the channel. Do not watch one more second of doing an overlay with a sketch on a, on a regular face. And you did everything you could to support us, but most importantly, you surrounded the family of these two little girls. Gosh, I'll never forget it. After you hear what we're going to release today, I'm going to ask for your continued support, your that's continued right understanding, there. your empathy and compassion. See, that's Garrett Kurtz uh, right as, there. As we okay. move forward uh, to find out who did this, and we will. That's Garrett Kurtz. I, could, I can totally see. We're seeking see the public's help to identify what? the driver of a vehicle that was parked at the old CPS DCS welfare building in the city of Delphi that was abandoned on the east side of County Road 300 North next to the Hoosier Heartland Highway between the hours of noon to five on February 14th, 2017. If you were parked there or know who was parked there, please contact the officers at the command post at the Delphi City Building. We are releasing additional portions of the audio recording from that day. Please keep in mind, the person talking is one person and is the person on the bridge with the girls. See? There you go. After all that time, finally they're letting us know there is just one person that is the guy. Because they, they were just not being... In that first press conference, they were it was just ludicrous, some of the stuff they were saying, uh, based on just reason and logic. You know, they they had seen the video at that point. They knew that this guy was on the bridge walking towards him and then says, hey, guys, get down the hill, right? He knew that. They knew that. So for them to go, well, we're not really sure if there was somebody else. Uh, you know, come on. This is not two different people speaking. Please listen to it very, very carefully. We don't know, Beth. We are also releasing video. Probably not. Recovered from Libby's phone. This video has never before been previously released. The video shows a suspect walking on the bridge. When you see the video, watch the, su watch the person's mannerisms as they walk. All right, but so you can't see it watch because you the guys mannerisms did it wrong. As he walks. Do you recognize the mannerisms as being someone that you might know? Remember, he is walking on the former railroad bridge. Because of the deteriorated condition of the bridge, the suspect is not walking naturally due to the spacing between the ties. During the course of this investigation, we have concluded the first sketch released will become secondary as of today. The result of the new information... Oh, by the way, before I forget, I wanted to bring this up. 
You remember that image, the board that was on top? Somebody sent me this, and I think that might be what that is. Somebody sent me the board that was on top of the, um, ah, hell, uh, what case was that? Just a second. So I'm, I'm just switching totally up. If you follow my channel, you know the case that we were just talking, um, yeah, Nicole Fitz, the board that was on top of her, okay? This is the board that was on top of her behind the ivy bushes curled up. And if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it from yesterday. Don't just watch when I talk about Delphi, okay? Watch all the cases that I cover, okay? Yeah, I, I get really tired of, oh, I only watch, I'm really interested in Delphi. You know, there's a lot of shit that goes on out there, and they're all interesting. Maybe you can help on all of them. Okay, so look at that. Doesn't that look weird? Look at You got the circle right there. You got the little pointy part. And there's even ones where there's this other stuff right there, and then the legs are kind of sticky figure I think that might be what that is it's a cartoon character okay now wouldn't that be interesting if that's a character that the uh, Ariana the daughter of the lady uh, was interested in wouldn't that be crazy yeah maybe that's maybe this is this cartoon character and maybe she liked that cartoon and then it was placed on top of her because it does it really has a lot of similarities in there. Even the white out part there. I don't know. It's just... It's interesting enough to me. Okay. And intelligence over time leads us to believe the sketch, which you will see shortly, is the person responsible for the murders of these two little girls. We also believe this person is from Delphi, currently or has previously lived here, visits Delphi on a regular basis, or works here. We believe this person is currently between the age range of 18 and 40, but might appear younger than his true age. directly to the killer who may be in this room. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. For more than two years, you never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you. We know that this is about power to you. And you want to know what we know. And one day, you will. A question to you. What will those closest to you think of they find out that you brutally murdered two little girls, two children. Only a coward would do such a thing. We are confident that you have told someone what you have done, or at the very least. The cartoon is called uh, Finn from Ad Advent Adventure, okay, so hold on a second. See, like, there's this character the whole time, you know, throughout all this. It looks very similar to that, you gotta admit. You know? So, it looks like it's for little kids, too. So it makes you sort of wonder. It's got those little weird squiggly legs, too, even. So... In case you want to look that up. They know because of how different you are since the murders.
We try so hard to understand how a person could do something like this to two, chil to two children. And I recently watched a movie called The Shack. And there's also a book that talks so well about evil, about death, and about eternity to the murderer. I believe you have just a little bit of a conscience left. And I can assure you that how you left them in that woods is not It's not what they're experiencing today. To the family. I hope that you all will give them some time because we're going to be asking that there's no media inquiry or no media response for at least the next two weeks and I hope you understand why. The family found out about this, about this information this morning. I just want the family to know that when I take my last breath on this earth, I'll be thinking of them. There's going to be a tremendous amount of questions. I know that. I know that. Uh, never in my career have I stood in front of something like this. Please be, be patient with us. Please. Uh, we're just beginning. We are. We yeah, he's trying. To, he's he's just saying that in the movie The Shack, you know, it's like about redemption. You know, maybe the killer will watch The Shack and you know think, gosh, I could do that too. And you know, it's it's in my the podcast. Did you guys not watch listen to the podcast that I did with uh, Morph and um, just Betancourt? Scene of the crime, Delphi. We are just now beginning. And I can tell you on behalf of the sheriff and the police chief, so many other partners um, that have stood with us over this period of time. Hey, Daisy, we you don't need to send an email. Just go to the doctor, okay? Stop. It's too blurry, too, the image you sent. I just unveiled the person that we believe responsible for the murder of these two little girls. So I invite media to take a look at that now. It's not up. Kim? All right, here, I'm going to show, I'm gonna show, show the image of, uh, that Daisy just sent in. Does that look like a broken arm? I mean, I hope that's your wrist right there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's your, I don't know. I see something there, but it looks more like a shadow. I, I don't know. I don't see, uh, well, that's your, that's your picture right there. Okay, I don't, I don't even know what we're, it just looks blurry and it's hard to tell anything. Okay. Yeah, it look, looks like, maybe like a bruise right there. We're also going to show you a video, not previously released, that superintendent spoke to, and also the audio that's additional to what's been previously released. It's only a slight change in it. So give Sergeant Riley just a second as he gets that up and ready. Stand by for the video, please. No, see, there is no sound of the video. See, look how, look how, it just, look at the, 
the platform, how it's it's moving all over the place. You can't tell how he's moving. It's like it's almost on a swaying bridge at that point. As Superintendent Carter mentioned, he is on the railway bridge. You have to take uh, different steps to get to it. This information later this afternoon will be on the state police website. For the community that's here, we have uh, 100 copies of the news release. If you put in that URL, you'll be able to get to that site to play it. And we also have uh, that same release for you in the media. And the rest of the state will get that release in about 15 minutes. So we appreciate those of you that came here. This concludes our announcement. Thank you for your time, patience, and courtesy. Yep. There's no audio. But anyways, I think that's about it for me tonight, everybody. I appreciate you all coming on. Uh, I don't know. I just wish there was just more information out there. But I am going to do a flyby, okay? Probably going to go back to, well, let's see. Let me just pick a place in the world somewhere. Yeah, let's go down here to Mars. Just look at this damn thing. I guess if you're ever going to practice... Uh, practice for Mars, I would go here, okay? Because that, that looks like Mars. I mean, that is just... No, the new part was, hey, hey guys, that part. That was new. Down the Hill was in the first press conference. So that's why it was weird that they didn't release all of that right at the beginning. Nope, that wasn't new. That wasn't new. The only thing that was new in that one was, hey guys, and the video, which was really, you know, not much different. I had taken the three known images before and looped them, and it didn't look way different, you know. Oh, cool. Trevor, thanks. Yeah, I'm going to go you know, in the U.S. somewhere. They have better, way better maps over there for some reason. <laughs> I'm totally lost here. Okay. okay. How about right there? What's there? Hey, thanks, Trevor. Appreciate it. Thanks for being you. Well, thanks for being okay that it's me. <laughs> oh, and thanks, Paisley Dream. Yes, 1XE, be safe out there. Jet fuel for the fly by Lalal. <laughs> All right, got it.
Thank you, Trevor and Paisley. And also, hold on a second. So thank you, uh, Trevor, for the PayPal earlier. So thank you very much. And then also, um, let's see. Andrea, Ruggiero, Drum. <laughs> I think I got it right. Billy Boy Blue, and again with Andrea. And then uh, Billy Boy Blue, Claudia Neubauer, Cairo, Curious Georgia, Sean Beecham, Billy Boy Blue, Sean Beecham, Robin Frost, Sean Beecham again, Billy Boy Blue, Robin Frost, Sean Beecham, Kim F. Sharp, Sean Beecham again, Sean Beecham, and Trevor Hudgens, and Paisley Dreams. Let me check something. Hold on. Oh, and then also on PayPal is Terry. Thank you very much. And then another one came in earlier, but it's for my dogs, but from Lori Staggs. Okay, so thank you very much. So I guess Blue and Chloe get something. It's not even that far away from where I just was. 
You look at this, huh? The craziest place on the planet. Hey, thank you, Emily Flotilla! I'm gonna fly right through that little gap right there. Come on. I can do it. Woo -hoo! What I'm talking about. Bam! There it is, the nebulae e lac lac lig lac lac. Unbelievable, unbelievable. All right, everybody, make sure that you thank anybody if they're. You see them sitting there and they're in the military, they're a police officer, they're an EMS, they're a. Uh, hell, I mean, these teachers are teaching as well uh, online. You've got the people that are supplying the grocery stores, you've got. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are doing things that we don't really see. I mean, hell, the, the garbage trucks are still going around picking up people's garbage as we sit in our homes, all right? So here's the thing. Uh, make sure that you, if you go outside, you go to the store, I I 100%, I'm not a, I'm not a medical expert, but I think um, what they're telling you about not wearing masks is totally bullshit okay um you know it really keeps if you have a mask on it and you're sick and you're coughing it keeps it really reduces the droplets okay if you have like even a scarf on or something okay some will get through but it won't be anywhere near what it would have been so don't listen to them okay if you have a mask or something like that wear it Okay, and they're starting to say that more now because now they're getting the, the truckloads in. I get what they were doing at first because you got to make sure the frontline people have it. But they're producing so many masks and everything right now that they're, they're not going to run out. Okay. Never mind. The Gang B wine cheese tasting <laughs> party is back on. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. All right, Billy Boy Blue. Good. Yeah, or just wear, you know, if you have a... If you feel like giving your mask and everything, if you have one, to doctors, 
and everything, go ahead. But And if you want to wear a scarf. But it can't be bad to wear a scarf. How could it hurt? You know, you're going to keep somebody else. If everybody wore a scarf, it would dramatically decrease the droplets in the air. Right? Doesn't that just make sense? All right, so just make sure you wash your hands. You don't touch your face. And hell, if you want to go to the store and it's got some extra people in there, it won't protect you. That's the thing. is It's not going to protect you that well at all from getting a droplet because it, it can get through a scarf. But if everybody wore, you know, I mean, when I say that, I mean, it can get through, but it's not as easy if it was just floating in the air. So when somebody coughs with a scarf on or sneezes, well, definitely it's not going to travel as far. And it just makes it not spread as much. I hope that made sense. I, I just, look at, um, if everybody in the country had four or five N95 masks and instructions how to clean it, this virus would be gone in probably, uh, I mean, as soon as, here's what you could do. As soon as it started to drop dramatically, you could literally have people walking around in society as long as you had the ability to completely protect yourself with the masks. There just aren't enough of them uh, right now, but in the future there will be. So make sure the next time this ever happens that everybody has those types of masks. Don't you think? Doesn't that make sense? It does to me. It does to me. Anyways, thank you guys very much for uh, showing up and contributing and supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. No, it's uh, tough times. But uh, I think we're making a difference too at the end of the month. I know, I've been seeing that. They, they're, now they're starting to say, hey, yeah, yeah but you wear a scarf, wear a mask if you got one. But they weren't saying that before because I think they know that obviously... If, if you have a mask, it's better than not having one, right? I mean, Jesus. Well, that's not true because some people feel like they're, the, um, when they have the mask on, they're invincible and start, nah, they don't. When you have the mask on, you're constantly aware of the virus. You're tripping out. Like you're, you got the mask on and you're just, oh my God, okay. You're probably even more conscious about not touching your face. You're probably more conscious about everything because it's a constant reminder. It's that whole rubber band on the finger thing. Okay. Anyways, that's it, everybody. Um, I appreciate you guys showing up tonight. And uh, Chloe's dead, dead asleep below me here. And uh, that's it. So we will see you guys tomorrow for a, another show. All right. So that's it, everybody. Thank you very much. And until next time, be safe out there. Two, three, four. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> ding, ding.